So Owen, which of the 1996 FMV games have you played? Would Ripper have been around that time? Yeah, Ripper Ripper started yeah. in 1996. I thought so, in February. Yeah. so I, I, I played Ripper Inside Out. Um, cool, let's see what else. I never got to play Star Trek Klingon because my Vaser driver didn't like it. Okay. Um, so I had to take that one back. Uh, let's see. I had... I was one of the very few people in the world who had a Sega Mega CD. So I played Sewer Shark and Ground Zero Texas and things like that. But PC side of things, Wing Commander, obviously. I don't know if you can call Wing Commander 3 and 4 uh, and Prophecy an FMV game. Or if they're like space combat flight sims that have FMV cutscenes. Well, it's considered an FMV game. If there are yeah. FMV cutscenes, it's an FMV game. There you go. So there you go. Wing Commander 3, 4 and Prophecy. Although Prophecy would have been later. I think... Yeah, Wing 4 would have been 96. Uh, oh, God, let's see what else. I never got to play Phantasmagoria or Phantasmagoria 2, because again... Uh, you know I mean? oh, okay, no, live stream I over know. even before it began. <laughs> so I have to apologize. Um, again, we only had the family PC, which was a 75 megahertz Pentium Packard Bell with no graphics acceleration, no hardware acceleration whatsoever. So a lot of even even DOS-based FMV games, Windows 95-based FMV, wouldn't run on the bugger. And uh, I was just a kid, so you know, it's, not like, it's not like now when I can go out and buy my own tech. Uh, I was stuck with what my parents had, and what my parents had was, was one of those. You go into the store and you don't know what you're buying, and the salesman rips you off with this. That's what we had. Well, that's why you should get you should take your allowance and go to the store and buy it yourself. Yep. With, uh, without you know, your I parents' could... consent. How much allowance do you think I had to buy an entire computer? I don't know. <laughs> So, but let's see, what else would there have been around then? Obviously, I played Borg back in the day because a friend loaned it to me. I didn't actually have it myself. The original? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Star Trek Borg, so let's see. What else would there Star Trek Borg? Never heard of it. <laughs> really? You know, it's, it, it's not very good. Uh, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> what else see. would there have been around the time? Well, you had Spycraft, the great game. You had uh, well, Star Trek. Trickling on we mentioned. I think most of the FMV game came out. Uh, FMV games came out in 1996 because a lot of them started production in 1994, mm -hmm. and it took longer than expected. And then we had um, five minutes left, five seconds left, and then we yeah, got to no the worries. intro. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Curtis. My name is Daniel Abu, and Curtis is currently on his work tour. So we're going to have an episode of Daniel Plays with Star Trek Borg remastered today, along with the person who remastered it, Owen Davis, which we'll, I'll introduce in a moment. Um, I hope you have a great Wednesday. Um, we had an air siren alarm a couple of hours ago. So in case there's another siren during the live stream, we're going to switch to the be right back scene for a couple of minutes. Hang tight, and I'll be back after five minutes, and we'll continue the stream. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat. I see MDQP, uh, Velvet Tea Cake, Ozzy Ezereth, Dragon Miyutsu, AT Machine. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Um, regarding conversations with Curtis, this week, Paul is back on Friday, and we're going to have a very special Phantasmagoria 1 live stream. Tori will, will join us, as usual. And we're going to have a very special guest. It's not Roberta Williams, but she might pop in the chat like last week. Um, it's someone else. You, you guys need to guess who that person is. And whoever guesses correctly, we're gonna, I don't know, mention his name or her name. Anyway, um, thank you to our Patreon members. Not a lot of changes since the last update. That's why uh, Spoon AI1 and Jonathan Mayer are still considered new members. Um, Thank you to our coffee members, top seven, CJ, Shrex, 
James Jenkins, Gumpy Art, Mort Murphy, Whitey Wonder, Kevin from TV. And what else? I see that um, any, any Lennis is guessing it's LO. No, it's not LO, but I'm interviewing LO next week. So you should you should try being more phantasmagoria focused, either one or two in your guesses about the, the special guest. That's all I'm going to say about that. So without further ado, I give you Owen Davis. Hi, Owen. Hello, Daniel. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And thank you for joining. And thank you for working on this remastered, which is the reason why we're all here today. So, um, tell us a bit about yourself. About me, I was okay. Um, I'm a freelance web developer, a uh, bit of a Star Trek fan, um, with apparently too much time on my hands. But I have a bit of a tinker around. My wife will tell you that every now and then I'll get an idea in my head, and what tends to happen is I disappear for a few weeks or a few months and just you know, head down on it. And this was the result of that. Um, I'm an enthusiast, shall we say. So, out of all of the games you could have remastered from 1996, why Star Trek Borg and not Phantasmagoria 2, for example? <laughs> well, this is a project I've had in mind for a couple of years, mainly because I found out, and I can't remember exactly where, that there was a Japanese DVD version of the game, which, which itself had higher resolution, higher quality video than the original CD-ROM version did. Um, and also that someone had got a hold of it and put it up on archive.org, which of course meant I could just download the disc images and start playing with it. Um, and for about three years, I've been playing around with remastering and upscaling video with AI anyway. So those two factors sort of percolated into the idea that maybe I'd, I'd develop this. And I kept putting it off because it was always my intention to make it playable on the web because there was no reason for it not to be. The technology exists, and this is not a complicated process to run through it. Um, but it needed an interface, and I always wanted to do an LCARS, you know, Star Trek computer interface, and that alone as a web development job, as a front-end development job, would have been a massive chunk of work. Um, but just several weeks ago, a friend of mine on Discord um, asked if I'd ever heard of the DVD version, and that, gave, that put my thoughts back in that direction. So I had a bit of a Google around, and I managed to find a web template that already existed with an LCARS interface in it. So then all I had to do was modify it. I didn't have to build it from scratch. And then I could concentrate on, on building the logic for the game flow and getting everything else working. And that that's when, as I said, and as my wife will tell you, sometimes I get an idea and I get obsessed with it and I just sort of hammered at it for about two months and then I was done. It surprised me actually quite, quite so, how quickly So this was done together. in exactly two months? or Around about that, give or take a few days, yeah. And the, the upscaling itself, how long did that take? The process. Oh, not long, because um, four and a half hours worth of video, so it would have been probably about 18 hours straight of processing time to get it up there. So you ex extracted all of the videos from the game itself, and yeah. then well, uh, which format nice were they in? Uh, from the DVD version, they were literal DVD oh. VOD videos, exactly the same as it would be on any other DVD. I don't, I didn't actually get the DVD version running. I don't even know if it was intended for PC or if it was meant to play in a standard home DVD player. I would assume the latter. Uh, but yeah, it was all standard. Yeah, if you can rip it off of a DVD, then I guess it's a DVD rip. And I presume that the interactive parts are just like a DVD menu. You jump through. I think that's menu. probably how okay. it worked. Um, but I obviously recreated everything in JavaScript to make it web web compatible. I literally built it from the ground up, just in in JavaScript logic. And in order to test how things would work, I didn't. I'm not. I'm not a, an application coder. I don't know C or anything like that. I'm, I'm just a web developer. So in order to sort of figure out the logic tree and, and how the game progresses and where your correct decisions and your wrong decisions are, I I have the CD-ROM version, the old CD-ROM version of the game anyway. So I ran that in a Windows 95 virtual machine and just played it through. And uh, also by watching the videos, it was pretty obvious what had happened, which decision you'd made led to this particular sequence. So from that, I was able to then go through and write the structure of it. And were there any parts uh, in which there were more than two choices? Oh, there are several where there are more than two choices, yeah. Um, there's usually only one choice that, well, 
yeah for the most part there's only one choice that will progress the story and lead you on to the next bit but there are several several blind alleys and dead ends even a couple that where you make the wrong choice and it'll take you down a side alley and you'll have several choices there as well that can all lead to different results but they're all they're all on a kind of branched off failure path and there's one route one direct route through the game from from the beginning to the and, good end and how did you uh, decide which size of hitbox you will use for each scene um was it personal see, well, preference that, that's, that's a good question um because the original game well, running on cd-rom that so there's this element where you can uh, you have a tricorder you can use that Q gives you that allows you to um, get extra information about other things within the game, other people, elements, computers, technology, that kind of thing. And some of that information is vital to solving puzzles. You can't figure out the puzzles without it. And in the original game, they had this system where you could pause the video at any point, you could pause the playback and click on anything on screen or anything that it allowed you to interact with. And you've got mm -hmm. those results, which meant, of course, they were tracking the content, creating metadata for where things were. So at any point you paused it and you, it had been moving invisibly those hotspots around. And I couldn't do that. Um, that, you know, I, I don't have the technology to track it. I don't have the know how to break down or reverse engineer the original game files to figure that data out. So um, I have just static hotspots literally on the screen. And what I do was put them inside a container in the code. Um, and give them a semi-transparent red background. And I'd go into the dev um, tools in Chrome and turn them on so I could visibly see them. And I'd just resize them until they were big enough to cover the thing you wanted to click. And then when I went to release the game, I removed that from the CSS so you couldn't see them anymore. So. Well played. Thank you. Um, okay. So regarding the other 1996 FMV games, I have a couple of them here. I have Star Trek Klingon. Uh -huh. The other Star Trek game in which they actually speak Klingon. Um, so I haven't finished this one yet. And I I've had haven't... a lot of people asking, I've had a lot of people asking if I'm gonna do that one next. To the point where actually on, on the trailer I pinned a comment at the top on YouTube saying, please stop asking if I'm gonna do Klingon next. Because <laughs> like I said, this this took two months straight of my time doing basically nothing else. It's like yeah, finish a day's work, do but... this, go to sleep, finish a day's work, do this, go to sleep. Um, and also, Klingon never got that all-important DVD release. So even if I did, I'd have to use the original CD-ROM FMV, which is incredibly low resolution, compressed to buggery, and um, 15 FPS. And I can, imp you know, I can, I can, I can use AI to bring the FPS back up to 30, and I can do my best to, you know, uh, expand the, and enhance the video, but it's not going to look as good as coming from a DVD source. And yeah, it'd even be a lot even if you add time. more processing power to the upscaling process itself, because eighteen hours for a two-hour game doesn't sound that much. It seems like the no, resolution. It's not terrible, but that's it. That's well. In fact, it would take less time to process the footage from Klingon because it's lower resolution. That's obviously less less original data is less data to process. So it would it would chunk through that a fair bit faster. Um, but the problem is, it's the old garbage in, garbage out scenario. If you've got really, if you've got lower resolution, lower quality footage in the first instance, what you get out the other end looks worse as well. Mm. The eventual video might be 1440p, 1080p, 4K, whatever, but it won't necessarily look that great. And did and you change the, anything in the video itself? Color grading, something? I did actually, yeah. I, I have no idea why, but the color balance, the uh, contrast especially, on the DVD version is way out there. It's incredibly light. Um, so I ran all the footage through uh, a scripting language called Avisynth. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also, of course, because it's DVD, it's interlaced as well. And if you, um, you know, you can you can use AI to remove the interlacing, but I find you get better results if you do scripting yourself. So yeah, I, I ran it through a, a bunch of processes I've scripted before for other projects. Um, to so yeah, sort out the color grading, bring the contrast, well, the brightness down, the contrast up, get a bit of depth to the blacks, that kind of thing. Yeah, I needed quite a lot of cleaning up before it even went for the AI upscale. Yeah, but. Uh... Even though we discussed uh, Star Trek Klingon and things that you haven't worked on, which other games did you work on or are working on? Uh, well, I'm, thank you. I'm part of a uh, project to remaster Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom. Um, I'm obviously the FMV guy. Um, I do a bit of 2D artwork as well, because, again, graphic designer, web developer. Um, but we've got uh, a... A gaming professional, a guy called uh, Pedro. He's our lead developer. He um, he actually does games for a living <laughs> for a studio out in Japan. Uh, and we've got a really talented um, 3D modeler 
uh, called Defiance Industries, who's doing, who's, you know, because we're, we're rebuilding basically the game. Um, we're taking the source for mission scripts and mission profiles and uh, game flow interactions, that kind of thing. But the the model it will be running in is brand new. It's it's um, Pedro built it himself on a, on a previous project in a previous role. And Defiance is doing brand new assets and models for everything in, in, the, uh, in the flight sections of the game. And yeah, we're basically, it's kind of a mod because you need the original game in order to play it. But aside from some scripting files, everything is brand spanking new on that. So that's a big project. We've already been, I've already been on board for it for over three years. I think the project itself has already been running for four or five years. And we're looking at another few years before it's even close to um, complete. Although we do have a demo out that people can play, which gives you a good idea of what it's going to look like. Why not use your usual two month schedule to just complete the game? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I can only speak from the UK, but it takes a lot longer to drive from London to Bristol than it does from London to Edinburgh. You know, it's two different journeys. And, and where, what's the source of the FFV scenes for the Wing Commander project? Because with, uh, yeah, so with this one, is it's the Japanese DVD. There's a Japanese um, DVD for Wing Commander as well? Not Japanese, no, but there was a DVD release. It got um, packaged with, I think, Sound Blaster. They had specific DVD accelerator cards back in the day, back when DVD was a new thing, which in mm -hmm. 1996 it was. Um, they were, and so, yeah, you couldn't play DVD on a PC without a, a plug-in accelerator card unless you had a very whizzy modern motherboard. So um, Sound Blaster sold, you know, uh, sorry, not Sound Blaster, 3D Labs or Labs, or whatever they're called, um, mm -hmm. sold this thing. And it was it was made exclusively as a package, a pack-in for buying that. It was kind of a sweetener. I mean, what was the point of buying the DVD card if you didn't have anything fun to play on it? Um, so, yeah, they, pack, they they made a DVD version of Wing Commander 4 with considerably, obviously, better quality FMV in it because it was playing literal DVD video. Uh, so that's been available for a very long time. And in fact, if you buy the original game on GOG now, that's the version you get with the, I think it's roughly 360p Bob video running in it from the DVD. And yes, Actually, I've got it's, that it's pretty... source material. It's great to hear that instead of just packing the content from the CDs, they actually recompressed it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's considerably better, and that's roughly the equivalent quality to what's on that Japanese Borg DVD. Um, and again, the same sort of processes I've got to go. There's a lot of cleanup before you even go to the upscale. You've got to tinker with the the video to make it work properly, uh, to make it look decent, and to give the AI as much to work with as possible. But yeah, it's it's roughly the same process as it was for Borg. In fact. It's probably one of the reasons it didn't take me too long to do the FMV for Borg. It's because I already had those processes down pat and spent the last three years working on Wing Commander. Well, we, um, last year, someone who worked in a dubbing company uh, had the, v the original VHS tapes of Phantasm Gloria 2. So we digitized those VHS tapes. Oh, fantastic. And so and so um, I think that this should be your next project. <laughs> hey, we can give it a go. I can, I can certainly look at the footage for you. As to whether or not I could recreate the game in the browser, that comes down to... No, recreate, you know what? Recreating the game in the browser would be my job. Your job would be <laughs> okay. to remaster the FMV scenes. Oh, I'm Real. sure I could have a look at that for you. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Send it my way. I'll see what I can do. Will do. Now, let's play Star Trek. Borg. Priority message, USS Canali to USS Cheyenne. We are under attack by Borg forces. Repeat, Borg forces. We intercept the two Borg vessels heading on a direct course for sector 001. Subspace Silver is too weak. That's over to Marine Starfleet Command. If you can read us, do not repeat. Do not send help. We are lost. Warn Starfleet. The Borg have returned. Repeat, the Borg have returned. So wait, did you actually remove the original titles, or did, or did you just add the remastered? I just bolted remastered on the bottom there, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> 0730 means 0730, cadet. Sit down. 
The captain wanted me to convey his regrets for not being here himself. As I'm sure you've heard, Starfleet is amassing an armada in Sector 001 to defend against the latest Borg incursion. We, or rather our ship, is on her way to join them. Starfleet has successfully defeated the Borg twice before, and we have every expectation. I'll freeze for a second. Someone in the chat is saying that this looks awesome. And bear in mind that this is just the 7, uh, 720p version because I lowered the resolution because I need everything to run smoothly with me uploading the screen, the stream and me uploading the stream to, uh, to the Zoom window and me streaming Owen's feed. So this is 720p. And in the options in the website, you can move up to 1440? 1440, yeah. Okay. Um, and some, something worth mentioning is that when you play it in your browser yourself, there is an entire Elkars interface around this, um, mainly so that you've got controls. So you can see to have to get help, you know, scan items, pause, that kind of thing. Um, so the reason I went 1440p is even if you're on a 4K screen, which, which I am, because it's sitting within an interface that, that wraps around it, the actual native resolution you're getting probably never goes above 1440. So the 1440 is there for people with the real highest end big ass monitors these days. Um, I, I think I don't think there's much of a quality bump if you go beyond 1080, to be honest. And even 720 works pretty well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Expectation of successfully stopping them now. However, given the probability of armed conflict, the captain has ordered that all non-essential personnel, including visiting Starfleet cadets, be transferred off the ship to a safer venue at the medical research facility on Marnus 3. Please have your gear packed and be at Shuttle Bay 3 in 30 minutes. Dismissed. Cadet Furlong. A moment, please. The captain has denied your request to stay on board, cadet. I'm sorry. The massacre 10 years ago at Wolf 359 was a great tragedy for the Federation. I was only one year out of the academy when it happened. A lot of my classmates died there. Now, each year I get older and they stay the same. I understand your need for justice. I'm sorry. Shuttle Bay 3 in 30 minutes. This looks like a plastic panel <laughs> with an image. It looks like, yeah. it looks like Trek, a sticker. Star Trek um, props look terrible if you see them up close. They always did. I mean, you can even see the cutouts around the buttons on the bottom right. That that looks like a piece of tin foil stuck over it. And yeah, it's, yeah they were badly machined out. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem with uh, with remastering old Star exactly. Trek. I mean, when, when all of this was running at 160p with massive scan lines across the top of it, because it was <laughs> interlaced, yeah. That That's why covered. when they um, upscaled the original series on Blu-ray, then they had to remaster everything. They changed the, they visual, the visual effects. effects. They, they remade yeah. everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Someone is asking if there is a downloadable version of this game. And if not... Um, Will there ever be? Probably not, um, because again, I'm not a software developer. I'm a web developer. So even if I did make the files available to download, it would still just run in the browser if you ran it locally anyway, because they're all web files. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and some MP4s. Um, and yeah, sorry, I'm probably not going to make it downloadable for legal reasons. Um, I am aware that this could be taken down. Um, I could be issued with a cease and desist, and then I'll have to take the website down. But I won't get sued. Uh, I'll just get told to stop doing it, which you know is entirely fair enough. If, C if CBS or Paramount make that decision, it's their legal property. They're within their rights to, to make that request. If I've gone distributing their content willy-nilly on the internet for people to keep, you know, with with the evident intention that that's what I was doing, that's piracy. 
and I'll get in trouble for that. I could get in serious trouble for that. So just being asked to take the website down, I can live with getting sent to prison. I'm not so hot on. So I probably won't. But, but if you'll get a cease and desist letter during the live stream, you're going to wait until the end of the live stream, right? <laughs> Tell you what, just for you, I won't check my email inbox until we okay. finish. Fair enough. <laughs> What would your father say? How old were you when your father was killed? Nine, ten years old? And you're still not over it? Perhaps I should introduce myself. I imagine you've heard of me, though. Q? It's short for Q. It was I, you know, who introduced Picard to the Borg. And it's because of me that ten years ago the Borg came to Wolf 359 and found that fleet of ships and found your father and killed them all. At 0800 hours during the Battle of Wolf 359, the USS Righteous such a noble name, Righteous, was hit by an unknown Borg weapons discharge and vaporized. Vaporized. No trace. Nothing to bury, nothing to mourn. The Borg took it all away from you in an instant. I understand your desire for justice. They don't, though, do they? But I do. You want action. You want to avenge your father's death. You want to kill Borg. What sentient. Yet still barbaric, bipedal hominid wouldn't. You can run away with the others like a scared trog, or you can come with me, cadet. The choice is yours. What should we choose? Well, could you freeze it for a sec? Um, I was about to say, it, it's, for other people play, if they play this, by all means, make whatever choice you like. But Daniel, for our purposes, I'd recommend the phaser. Because if you choose the suitcase, it's the only game over screen, actual game over screen in the entire game. And you will get taken right back to the start and have to play through the entire intro we've just seen again. Jeez. So I'd recommend the phaser. <laughs> and, and so this animation shows me that this is an interactive section. There's a decision to be made, yeah. And in fact, um, props to Defiance Industries, the chap I mentioned who's doing all the 3D modeling on um, Wing Commander for us. Uh, he... he rendered that ball cube for me in about 10 seconds flat <laughs> as a request to help me out. A Borg cube, yeah, okay. The, the spinning cube means that you've got a, the, you're at a decision point. You can generally, the music always kicks in as well. The do, 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 do. That's from the original game. Um, in the Jeopardy. original game, <laughs> uh, In the original game, your mouse cursor would have changed to a spinning cube. And I did play around with that, but I felt this made it, especially with the glow around it, it made it a little more obvious that, you know, you need to make a decision here. Um, okay. Especially if you're playing this on a tablet or on a phone, you don't have a mouse. So I needed so, some other way to display so it. So this works on a tablet. Perfect. This is the ben one of the benefits of making it work in the browser. It by default makes it cross-compatible with pretty much any platform with a modern browser on it. You can play it on Xbox. You can. I've seen from my metrics, from my Google Analytics, some people have been playing this on smart TVs. <laughs> if they've got one of those wavy um, air mice, it'll work. Yeah, It'll play on pretty much anything that will play video and has a okay. web browser, which is neat. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe you didn't hear me. I'm offering you a chance to go and kill some Have board. we hit a bug? I didn't see you a uh, mouse cursor. You should see the finger cursor. <laughs> oh man, our first bug. I've not seen this happen before. Maybe you didn't hear me. I'm offering you a chance <sighs> to go and now. kill some Borg. Do you want to or not? What's happening, Owen? The hotspot the should be there. It should you be. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, I've tested this six ways from Sunday. I've zoomed it. I've done all kinds of things. It should just work. That's it. Live stream over. <laughs> what happened? What? Okay, that's a completely different part of the game. My implant. You've broken it, Daniel. Oh my god. Uh, let's not go through the entire introduction. Luckily, Wait, you're can, at the end of the chapter. Can we skip? Yeah, um, you were at that point at the end of the chapter. So if you just go back to chapters and choose chapter two, that's what you know. What? You're basically just missing. But are we gonna are we gonna hit the same thing when we hit another? Tell you what, refresh the browser, go to chapters, go to chapter two. It's where we would have been anyway, and I'll have to look into why that happened because this okay. never happened before. Sorts of all. Priority message. This is literally what would have happened if you'd clicked the phaser. Mm -hmm. Okay.
I believe you. <laughs> now it's not even loading. Oh, you might want to go back into settings and set it back to 720p. <laughs> well, that's just embarrassing. <laughs> Don't worry, every game I play on stream, I usually find a weird bug that has never been... Big. Excellent choice, monsieur. Keep the phaser, you're going to need it. And take this too. Be careful now. Don't lose it. I only made one. Time! 0758, sir. Keep those phases firing, and where are my photon torpedoes? I'm just ready, Captain. Have a look. I can't see you. Let's see if we can shake them up a little, Ensign. Initiating Delta attack, sir. I'm reading the small weakness in the shields. Shields are holding fine, but power is down 10%. Weapons having no effect. Damn, they've adjusted their shields already. Why is it always the difficult species that are the most adaptable? The Borg adapt their environment to suit their needs. True adaptability involves changing oneself to suit their environment. I'm so glad you cleared that up. Recognize this place? You should. You keep a picture of it on your wall. The bridge of the USS Righteous. Your father's ship. The Tolstoy just took a major hit. This is him, isn't it? Well, I can see the family resemblance. I think she's pulling away. The Kyushu's coming on strong. Melbourne and Saratoga have lost power. Tolstoy, Kyushu, Saratoga, Melbourne. Recognize the name? Do you know where you are, cadet? Captain! Intruder alert. Security, isolate the ops console now. Uh, that's right, 10 years ago, Wolf 359. Security! Look at him. He's barely older than you are. He shouldn't be at security. But four hours ago, the real security officer, Lieutenant Sprint, was killed. And this first year, Ensign had to take his place. And because of his inexperience, everybody on board, including your father, will be killed. The phases are useless. Just isolate the panel now. If Lieutenant Sprint were still alive, he might be able to save the ship. But he's been dead for four hours. No wonder they don't want him on the bridge. Come on, can't you move faster? <laughs> Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Thaddeus Quint. He actually tried to save Sprint's life, but as you can see, he failed the old goat. <laughs> well, what'd you expect? He's a doctor, not a security officer. Still, if he had only had a little more creativity. But he didn't. He's bypassed the security lockout. <laughs> Doctor, he's dead. What? Shield mutation is shifting on its own. <laughs> shields are dropping. That must have been a really bad bang to the I head. Need shields back up now. You barely touched him. Death in battle. <laughs> if it were a Klingon, he'd be ecstatic. Ooh, I like this guy. Captain, there's a tight beam transmission going directly to the board queue. Computer is uploading data about emergency transporters. Anyone near Jeffrey Six? We need manual power rerouted through the secondary couplings. It's too late. The board cube is firing. Invasive maneuvers. So, now that you've seen your father die, are you ready to avenge his death? Or would you like to try something different? How about a chance to prevent his death? Lieutenant Sprint was killed four hours before the Righteous even got to Wolf 359. But if the good Dr. Quint had been able to save Sprint four hours before, then Sprint would have been able to save the righteous, and you would have grown up in the loving company of your father, and all for the want of a horseshoe nail. What say we give the old goat a second chance to save Sprint's life? You're not afraid of a little space-time continuum meddling, are you, cadet? No, I thought not. Shall we? This is Lieutenant Sprint. Do you think he knows he's gonna die? I don't think so. Don't bother saying hello. Just makes saying goodbye that much harder. Time, Mr. Furlong. Oh, 400 hours, sir. Is the cube within sensor range yet? Coming up now, Captain. Match speed. Stay with it. Setting a pursuit course. Shields up. Intruder alert. Sprint, look out! Shall we dance? Hope it's going to work. Sprint, make a choice. Yes, it's working. Fantastic. I hope I made the right choice. 
<laughs> Quint wasn't clever enough to think of it. Good thing I am. The board cube is pulling ahead. It's ignoring us completely. Match speed. Keep us within close range. Did Remember, you pause it or is it should have died? No, it's, every... it's pausing on its own. Everything you do in his place from this moment on changes history. In... Oh dear. Don't worry. It'll be fine. You got too, you got too many streams fate. going on, Daniel. No, I Lieutenant, think people who are watching like the stream friend? went and uh, <laughs> went and opened the website and themselves and are playing it right, at the moment. Lieutenant. There are all kinds of pain, Lieutenant. Don't let the fact that you are Bajani prevent you from acknowledging the hurt. Oh, please. Captain, coded message coming in from Admiral Hansen. He's ordering us to proceed with all speed to rendezvous with the rest of the fleet at Wolf 359, requesting us not to engage the Borg. Until then, maintain radio silence until contacted. Helm laying a course for Wolf 359. Pull ahead of the Borg cube and then match speed. Aye, sir. ETA at current speed, four hours, five minutes. Good. We don't want them to get there before we do. And Targus, get that thing off my bridge. Yes, sir. Wait, did I make the right choice? And it's your fault. I don't you know. What? Well, I hope we're learning something from our little mistakes. Okay. <laughs> If I told you to jump into a Signian vortex, would you do it? You're a sentient being of sorts. Try using this. You know, all this space-time manipulation does take some effort on my part. It's not that easy. I'd appreciate it if you'd make a little effort, too. What? Was this the wrong choice as well? It was. <laughs> Captain, he's got the Borg cube. <laughs> Shields are falling. Borg cube is firing. Well, I hope we're learning something from our little mistakes. Tell you what, hit freeze program. No, but last time when we froze the program during the interactive scene. I don't think that's what broke it. Well, that's actually something I was going to mention, something that someone pointed out to me in a comment on the trailer, which I hadn't even noticed. It was not intentional. If you're ever in a timed scenario like this, because if you do nothing, it will time out. Every mm -hmm. um, choice, if you do nothing, it will time out and play a video. Um, it wasn't intentional on my part, but because effectively we're, we're at a point now where there are invisible hotspots sitting over the over the top of the video, mm -hmm. and if you click them, they do something, and they carry on to they continue to work if you freeze the game. Um, that wasn't intentional; that's just the way it happens to have worked. So if you're ever on a time, it's just kind a of a sec. cheat, but you can just pause. Tom it. Oh, tipped hello. ten pieces of eight. This is simply astonishing. I can't believe this game looks so good. Yeah, and it's all thanks to Owen. Thank you very much. <laughs> because I guess they they filmed it on tape. I don't feel they it was filmed on film, so there's nothing to I actually know, well, work I tell with. You what, it, it was shot on actual Star Trek sets, and it was shot using uh, uh, I think modified Vo Star Trek Voyager um, sets, and this was a set from an Intrepid class, not Intrepid class, um, Excelsior class ship that they'd used in a film, and they did use all the same equipment and all the same production. Um, kit they would have used for an actual episode of star trek so it would have been shot on film really um but it would have been mastered on tape mm. um i mean that's what they had to do with the next generation that's why they had to go back to the original they had to go back to the original film to remaster it because all the masters were done on on analog tape i think um, the later series started getting mastered on digital um but yeah this would have been shot on on film I wonder this if no this problem. also had a production number because for example in the x-files fmv game they actually gave the game a production number as if it was a regular episode. Episode, fantastic. I have tinkered around with remastering. That was one of my earliest experiments, but that was just a X-Files? Yeah. Yeah. 
that one works out. Considering it wasn't a DVD release, that one I, I'm guessing was released later because it had higher resolution video. Um, but that one's easier to work with than, say, the original CD-ROM version of this would have been. Yeah. Well, the the X Files FMV game was uh, released in 1998, and so and, ah, and it was widescreen. So yeah. And it was it there. came on seven CDs. So oh, good Lord. The, I guess they didn't compress it as much yeah, as this game, true. which came on either one or two, because Star Trek Klingon is three. So maybe yeah. it was... Oh, this, no, this, 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 this is three, three discs as well. Um, although, yeah, yeah, it was three discs. Um, so another thing I was going to ask, Daniel, was um, how often do you want me to give you hints and tell you what to do? Because obviously I know All the, the time. <laughs> okay, you want to shoot the console. Okay. No, you know what? <laughs> Let me try, especially since uh, the try again option is uh, pretty doesn't take you too too much back. Tell into you what, the... if we get there, there's one later on that I will go. Well, you say it doesn't take you too back too far. Um, I made my own choices as to how far back to jump you for these things. Okay, because if you go by the original CD ROM, there's there's a lot of replay where you end up watching the same footage again and again and again. Um, but also sometimes failing and playing through a bit is the only way you see the information you need in order to pass. It's the only way you can get that data. So there's a bit later in the game where I will so, help So you this out. is like because a Sierra if, game. You have to die constantly to figure out things it, that you wouldn't have that otherwise. That does happen a lot in this, yeah. That does happen a lot. Um, okay. But there's a bit later on I'll help you out with because... I had to jump you back a fair chunk of time just in case you hadn't caught the thing that would have given you the answer, and you've got to work through it again and again and again, and that could get very boring for the live stream viewers. So, And okay. also, in that same area, there's an excellent fail state that you just have to see. It's probably the best part of the game. So I'll, I'll let okay, you know. Okay, so let me, every, every time we reach a, a choice, let me mm -hmm. choose first, and sure. then if things are, are too complicated, cool. then... I'll let you know. Somebody tip get 10 Absolutely. pieces of eight. Thank you, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. Definitely dead this time. Dead. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You should add an animation for the buffering scenes. Yeah, I think maybe I'll patch that in. Um, unfortunately, I don't come across this very often, so it didn't Definitely really Definitely off to me, my yeah, bridge this time. In there. Mr. Sprint, reconfigure your security console so you can control Tactical B. Then meet me down at the computer core. I want to secure this ship in case the Borg try and board us again. Good shooting. Thanks. How about quick thinking, Quint? Good work, Quint. Nobody ever gives me any credit for anything I do. That's because we don't like you, Quint. I think we can all save our hostility for the Borg, where it will be better placed, don't you? Let me ask you something, Baraka. Do you just spout these platitudes, or are you deluded enough to actually believe in them? Come on, Quint. No matter how hard you try, you're not going to change my mind. I still like you. <laughs> he kissed me. It actually feels like they improvised the entire thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. What are you staring at? Oh, of course, your father. This must be strange for you, knowing he may be about to die, knowing this may be your only chance to talk to him, tell him all about yourself, about the years since he died. I wouldn't if I were you. When he looks at you, all he sees is Lieutenant Sprint. I don't think he'd understand. Hey, Sprint. What, are you having one of your Bajani trances? See? Lieutenant Sprint, the console, please. The choice is mine. Uh, Grab the power nodule. What? How is he, Doc? I'm sorry. <sighs> You're just too stupid to live. 
What do you think this is supposed to be? Jewelry? It's a special gift from me to you. There's no other tricorder like it in the known universe. Use it! So, am I supposed to guess? No, if you look on the menu on the left, oh, there's oh, a scan oh. button. Now. Care to try yeah. your luck? And this is the first what puzzle you where you require you? information from the tricorder. So in the intro, Q gave you the tricorder. If you hit the scan button... Scan button. Don't tell me it's not working. Chance now. It's, it, it should be down on luck. the left hand side for you. What do you want to tell oh, me? I see it. Picture the tricorder in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah. So this is where in the original game you could pause the playback and y your mouse cursor would turn into a little spinning tricorder and you could click anything, which I can't really recreate. So for each chapter, I've given you thumbnails of the things that you could have scanned in that area, which isn't the most elegant solution, but it works for the gameplay. Yeah, it's fine. So I, I'm supposed to scan this? Yes. And you've lost your mouse cursor Security again. Oh, no, there console. we go. Reconfigurable bridge panel. Though bridge stations traditionally follow a set pattern, this pattern is neither required by Federation protocol, nor is it hard designed into the bridge layout. All there are bridge loads consoles of these, can be easily and I had to recreate to control them all. any of a number of bridge functions, allowing the captain in consultation with his engineers. Wait, is this image an overlay over the video uh, frame? It's, this is now a video file playing within the container of the tricorder, playing on top of our background video file. Is critical. Or you could end up dead. Nodule 1, the delimiter, carries a signal charge. It is always live, unless deactivated by engineering. Careful, the charge is painful. It won't kill you, but it'll hurt. Nodule 2, the power nodule, is the source of power for all bridge stations. It is always live, unless deactivated by engineering. Careful, this one won't hurt. It'll just make you very dead. Nodule 3, a signable nodule. This is one of the several nodules used to define console functions. In this example, the nodule defines the console as a security console only. To control tactical in addition to security, the nodule must be removed. Careful, though. It's hot, live, energized. Not enough juice to kill you, but enough to make you wish you were dead. To turn off the feed, remove... Nodule 4. The conduit. First! Then remove Nodule 3. Replace Nodule 4. Et voila! Now, you're cooking with replicators. So four, three, and four, right? Yeah, and you've already re you, you removed number four first, so I wondered if you were just going to stumble upon the solution yourself. And you've got two options now. You can hit exit on the tricorder or resume game on, uh, on the left map. Yeah. You got it. Anderpov to Sprint. I'm waiting for you down in the core room, Lieutenant. Now. It's just his way. You'll get used to it. Yeah, but I'd still hurry if I were you. The captain definitely does not like to be kept waiting. You do know how to get to the core room, don't you, Sprint? I think they forgot to vacuum. The floor it looks dirty. <laughs> we're coming up to something I'll tell you about if we, if we get there very similar wait in the scanner i saw that we can scan this please key in destination code okay turbo lift manual interface federation turbo lifts are capable of processing verbal commands in over 13,000 languages for those species unable to interact verbally and during ship emergencies, a TurboLift destination code can be manually relayed into the TurboLift computer via the interface. For a list of TurboLift destination codes, see the ship schematic. USS Righteous Schematic. Oh man, the there's so much learning. Of the USS there's Righteous. a lot of data in there, yeah. Key areas such as bridge, crew quarters, engineering, computer core control are highlighted. More information is available on all areas, including turbo lift designation codes. Okay, so... Man, I'm supposed to write these down. The 90s <laughs> were, were hard. Unforgiving, yeah. <laughs> There are a couple that are even more obtuse than this as well. Crew. Okay. 
But it, I'll give you a little help in hand here. You only need to go to the computer call okay. for this puzzle. Um, but I would say it's it's worth failing at least once to see the results. Wait, failing are, by by are, typing the wrong co code, or just hitting the enter, just hitting the enter button straight away without putting anything in will work. Um, but yeah, hmm. there's a couple of fail states for this one. No, you were talking about the carpet. Yeah. You can see drag marks on this one. Yeah. That it's uh, not in low resolution. And the reason you can see those drag marks over on the left is because they pulled that deck chair around the corner so many times. <laughs> oh, thank you, my good man. Sprint, we're waiting. I believe you're wanted in the computer... Oh. ...core control room. Oh, mercy. Because I can. <laughs> Please key in destination code. That's the beauty of of, a, of remastering either games or movies from the 80s and 90s. Because, like with the movie Cobra with Sylvester Stallone, Hello, yeah. then he has reflective glasses, reflective sunglasses, and Can so you, see you the get film crew? yeah. You get the movie and the behind the scenes at the same time. You see everyone. Fantastic. You see the catering. There's something, similar in, there's something in Howard the Duck where they're shooting in a nightclub and there are mirrors below the stage. You can see the entire boom rig go past Dolly Rig. You're not making very good use of your time. Please key okay. in destination code. And again, you can pause it at this point to make it easier. It'll still work. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not clickable. Where am I supposed to see the number? Oh, it doesn't show you what you're putting in. You just got to hope you're getting it right. What? And if, and I... if you've already stuffed, if you've already pressed too many things or the wrong numbers, I'm afraid it's already too late. It was a very unforgiving really game. Really need to learn to make better use of this equipment. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting the difficulties of dealing with your limited humanoid mind. If it's not right in front of you, you don't notice it. I've given you a tool to see beyond the superficial veneer of reality to a deeper level of knowledge and understanding. And you ignore it. I should be hurt. But then again, I'm not the one who keeps getting killed. Were there any major artifacts that you had to remove from the video seats? Not really, no, no. It was from the DVD version, it was all pretty clean. Zero, six, one. Well, you went fast enough. It's, <sighs> it was a very unforgiving game. As a quality of light, so this has gone back to the first fail state in a loop. Um, what I suppose I could do in the future as a quality of life improvement is add a delimiter on it. So if you fail three times, it'll just take you to the oh, you, computer core controller. Sprint, we're waiting. I Maybe add a skip button. Computer core <laughs> oh, mercy. Well, I saw you right clicking there. You can right click and turn the standard HTML video controls on, and they'll appear at the bottom. And, and then I'll the be able to, to skip. Well, then you'll be able to drag through the entire timeline, scrub through the entire timeline of the video. Why? But you then run the risk that you'll skip because past the point where I introduce <laughs> the hotspots, in which case you can't interact with the video. So it's a little bit. <laughs> Wait. Annie Lennis in the chat said catering on set is always the best. Everyone gains 10 pounds in a month. I worked on Stargate. Oh, wow. Didn't work on Star Trek, though. <gasps> oh, do tell us more. Craft I, pre I presume it's Star Stargate, the TV show, and not um, the movie. But do tell us more. Okay, so now that I, I froze the program, can I enter it? Yes, it'll, it should still work. I'm seeing the hotspots with the cursor, so... Six, one, nine. There is, for each puzzle, just enough time to do what you need to do. It's just, you've got to be on it. Hey, buddy, I guess I've <laughs> Any hesitation. Mr. Sprint, I am a very tolerant captain, except when it comes to punctuality. I suggest you become more familiar with this ship's layout so you don't keep us waiting again. Do I make myself clear? Mm-hmm. Crystal. We were trying to route all of the ship's controls through the security systems as an extra precaution. 
But something kept rejecting all of our attempts to access the security programs. And that's when we found this. It's obviously Borg. But how did it get on the ship? And what is its purpose? It seems to be tied in directly to the security systems, locking us out. Question is, how do we remove it? Sprint, you're the security officer. What do you think? What do I think? Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> Oh, those visual effects are spectacular. Yeah. Wow. You can see the loop point in the sparks. Self-destruct initiated. What the hell? Computer abort self-destruct. Self-destruct in 10 seconds. Bridge, override all security systems. I can't, Captain. Five seconds. I'm locked out. Four, three, two, one. Wait, was this the wrong choice? That was the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. Meddling with things you don't understand again? You know, I think I'm learning something here. Hubris. That's what I don't like about you people. Your ignorance of the working of the galaxy is unparalleled, and yet you continue to blunder ahead as if you knew what were going on. Wait, uh, Gamers Grotto, who was the one who asked about the downloadable version, is saying, I worked on several movies and TV shows. Catering is crazy. Which movies and which TV shows? Wow. Or we got a pretty lively chat with people from the industry. The Borg, on the other hand, really seem to know what they're about. If only they had more personality. In fact, if they had any personality, I might consider spending more time with them. But for now, don't touch what you don't understand. Um, um, um. Don't forget your tricorder. definitely tied into the security system it's analyzing code it seems to be going through some sort of encryption sequence like it's trying to rewrite it's trying to crack the self-destruct key code self-destruct program initiated what the hell computer abort self-destruct self-destruct in 10 seconds bridge override all security systems i can't captain five seconds i'm locked Four. out Three, two, one. Was this the right choice? I think most things that end with the ship exploding are not the right choice. <laughs> Non-standard technological implant. Borg in origin. Energy source. Unknown. How do we have time for this? The ship is about to explode and I'm... <laughs> Danger. Warning. Leave it alone. Okay. That didn't help. Melded alloy cutting tool. Well, you've used both of them. Used to dislodge or detach <laughs> so, is there any point of uh, um, reading about these tools, given so that I've used the them? I, I think it depends how much you care about the nerdy details. <laughs> so no. I'm actually going to help you. Yeah. Okay, so is there anything I can do here? Well, would you like me to tell you? Yeah. This is, so I, I put it specifically in the help um, screen that sometimes the right decision is to do nothing. Sometimes you need to let it time out. Mm. And in fact, Q did say in the entry for the device, whatever it is, leave it alone. It's, it's, it, that's the hint that you, you, this one you just meant to leave it. That's you know, not I always, always the right choice. Sometimes it's the right thing to do. I always wondered who was the first one to add do nothing to gameplay because Telltale started adding yeah. it to their adventure games in which one of the dialogue options was say nothing which say nothing. was revolutionary but it seems like doing nothing was revolutionized before in this game what's the, i can't was it was it edgar and no, edgar um um samuel clemens what's his name who wrote um my brain does this to me i'm sorry it's not great on a live stream uh the quote anyway is sometimes it's better to remain silent 
and be thought an idiot than to open your yeah. mouth and remove all mm-hmm. doubt. <laughs> so I think that's where Telltale probably got the idea from. Let's who wrote this. Huckleberry Finn? That's who I'm trying to think of. Mr. Sprint is right. Until we know more about Borg technology, I don't think we should make any attempts to interfere with the implant directly. Captain, we were within transporter range for only 6.7 seconds. Mm-hmm. I don't see how the Borg transported to the bridge and implanted the circuit unless... Unless there were two of them. If there is another Borg on this ship, he's found a way to screen against our usual senses. I'll get Targus to scan against anomalies. See what you can do to help. Yes! Is this chapter three? <laughs> I think so. Uh, Targus, enough. No. Just like, Wait, why is this chapter so five? going to alert us if a particle of dust falls. If that particle Shouldn't of dust be? falls off a of Borg, then I want to know about it. You're too it's cautious. chapter five at the top. Spread tell him. Is it chapter five, The Call? <laughs> yeah. It's still chapter The Call. Oh, that is because we've, we've had the intro, we've had uh, the console we've had the you computer know, call me, you, you guys would quite have had any fun at the academy <laughs> if it weren't for me you guys wouldn't have graduated from the academy what oh. lieutenant furlong lieutenant sprint and ensign targus somehow that's not quite how i pictured it that's not your fault every time i see that thing it reminds me of how much courage it must have taken for you just to be here and of how much we both owe sprint just don't let Sprint here. His head's big enough already. What exactly do you owe him? You'll spend the rest of your life a slave to technology. I'm not a slave to it. In six months, a year at the most, I won't even need this. In three hours, four at the most, we won't even be alive. Unless we're Borg. <sighs> Dr. Quinn is testing the boundaries of the humanoid ability to maintain affection for him which he thinks he's not worthy of. So what he does is he tries to make everyone dislike him. Well, he's very good at that. <laughs> he's right about one thing. We could end up as Borg. And I know the last thing I want to have happen to me is to be assimilated into the Collective. We won't let it happen to any of us better dead than Borg. Agreed? Even Quint. hand is that? Even Quint deserves to be Borgified. Why is he holding it like Borg this? definitely deserve Quint. <laughs> We got him. Somewhere in Jeffrey's tube six. Sprint, furlong. Take a couple of fully charged phasers, flush out the Borg, and neutralize him. Understood? Yes, sir. Six. A lot of people get stuck on this one, by the way, just so you know. What is this, an air vent? A Jeffrey's tube. We're um, routing circuitry through the ship, because I am a Star Trek nerd. The reading's not clear. Security, but I do outrank you. Yeah, it's only by three weeks, but I think that would stand up in case of a court martial. I'll tell you what. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, it's fifty fifty. I think you're right. I need to add a little buffer animation if that happens. 
This shouldn't happen this often, though, it has to be said. Don't worry, it gives us a chance to talk a bit. <laughs> Watch your back. Actually, something you could do later on, maybe, is I also put the original CD-ROM quality in there for nostalgia purposes, with the low resolution and the scan lines across it and everything. And you can activate it mid-game, or you need to restart oh, the game? You can, no, you can switch resolution at any point, and it'll carry on right from where you left off. You want us to give it a try? Yeah, sure, go for it. So, I'm supposed to go to settings, and then... Settings, yeah. There's CD-ROM quality at the bottom. <sighs> This and is this gonna be... Oh snap! So that's what the game originally looked like. <laughs> and we, we get the 1996 buffering this time straight from that's the CRM. That's not still buffering. That's not buffering. Because honestly, idea. the file size for this is dinky. You see, there is another board, and he's waiting <laughs> in the card of whoever comes out first. Poor old dad. I hope you don't feel guilty. It took me a while to notice that he turned into a Borg, given the low probably. resolution, so let me change My it eyes back. are bleeding. Yeah. My eyes are bleeding. Remember what you said, better dead than Borg. Didn't even ask him to. Didn't even wait for him to ask. Good try, but you see, the Borg are clever in their own monolithic way. They adjust to hits from any phaser, and they all know how to shield themselves against that frequency. You have to adjust along with them. Oh, well, we get to see the visual effects in slow mo. <laughs> You did say you wanted to kill Borg, didn't you? I like the irony of it, but aren't you forgetting someone or something? Rise and shine. Rise and shine. If it looks like a Borg, Walks like a Borg and sees like a Borg, then it must be a Borg. You're wondering what you're feeling? That's pain. No Borg is an island unto himself, every Borg is part of the whole. Seems that I'm only making bad choices today. <laughs> I'm getting intermittent Still got choices readings, to make. but they're marginal. Maybe we should try removing some of the circuitry just to be sure. I say leave sleeping Borgs lie. His eyes just open. Could be some kind of autonomic response. You can choose from these options, by the way. Was this the right choice? This is one of those blind alleys I was telling you about where it still gives you choices, but they're all fails. Mainly so that John Delancey can chew the scenery.
Nighty night. You just called your fellow Borg up to the bridge and had him assassinate all your friends. Don't feel bad, though. If it ever goes to trial, you can always claim the Collective made you do it. This time, try not to get caught. Oh, and by the way, your father cheats. Did you hear what I told you? He cheats. You can't win. <laughs> so... Do nothing. Well, if you're not gonna play, spread behind you. Ah! Surprise. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, would you like me to tell you? Or do you want to Wait a sec. Well, if nope, you're not gonna play, okay, just behind tell me. You. Ah! I meant to sock him one on the chin. Surprise. Mm. His chin is just poking in the top of the video there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, that's my usually long one. Maybe we need a disk swap <laughs> for the actual to get the actual scene. How long is this, this is, supposed? Well, depending on on the available bandwidth at the time, it's meant to be relatively instantaneous. Um, tell you what, try switching it to CD. I, I think it's honestly because you've got so many streams going on simultaneously and you're shifting stuff all over the place. So nah, that's not the issue. <laughs> I, I bet that millions of people are playing the game at the moment. Please resume. Another click, click restart. Settings 720p. Continue. Come on. Oh, dear. Come on. Okay, let's de let's debug this. <laughs> no, that's oh no, there you go. That that reference error always pops up. That's fine. Oh, missed your chance. <laughs> and this game is brutal. Yep, <laughs> very unforgiving. We've adapted to our phaser settings. Okay, so I take the phaser. Mm -hmm. I set it to stun. I click the plastic button that does nothing. <laughs> no. That's glued to the unit Maybe, using... It a... might be touch sensitive, you never know. Tuning the phaser to a higher EM band frequency. Yeah, the that's exactly what I wanted to do. Yep, exactly. Nice shot. What did you think I was going to do? Cheat? Gamer's Grotto just confessed that he's playing the game at the moment, so he's taking Let's up our bandwidth. The circuit can tell us. <laughs> well, let's see, I can tell you right now. Seventeen people are playing at the moment. Seventeen oh, people. You see, before the live stream, we had eight. Maybe if we hooked it into the. So people stop playing the game. You should watch this live stream. <laughs> you get commentary from me, which is less important, but from Owen, which is more important. Thank you. The ship's computer and had it analyzed. I'm just going to point out all the I'd bugs. I'd like to know more about it first. Can't you I'm going to find all the bugs. <laughs> Maybe, but I don't think I get. And I'll excuse the bugs. <laughs> Sprint. What do you think? What do I think? Stop asking me! Oh man. I'm gonna make the wrong choice. I know it! <laughs> yep. Was this the wrong choice? Nope. Well, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you it's not meant to pause. 
Yeah. This one's free. Don't do it. So it was the wrong choice. <laughs> Good guess, Ensign. Logical, intuitive, decisive, but eh, wrong. Try again. Jeez. Is this is this one? It's something you can do. The tricorder is having trouble gaining access to the data. The circuit is designed with a pretty standard neural interface, though, like some of our medical implants. No, it just can't seem to. Well, I guess that's all we're going to learn from this. It's too bad. I bet there was some really important stuff on that Borg circuit. Maybe you should try something else. It's too late to try something else, Quint. The circuit's already fried. It's not too late if I say it's not too late. Okay. What should I choose? Well, tell you what, I'll save you um, all the reading and listening on the tricorder. If you, if you check through a couple of different entries on the tricorder, you, um, you'll find out that the thing on Ensign Targus' head is there because she would, yeah, that, that down there. Bio neural implant. Therapeutic. Integrated directly into the patient's neural system. The neural implant is used in a variety of neural treatment programs. Ensign Targus' implant is designed to transmit a continuous feed of neural data into the neural system to block out the craving developed during her experience as a prisoner of the Cardassians. So yeah, they built up an entire load of backstory, which you only get by reading all these entries, uh, which cover how she was she was kidnapped and held hostage and tortured with this particular thing. Um, and someone else, uh, I think um, Furlong just mentioned that the little Borg circuit is technically compatible with it. So yeah, the right solution here is to click on her on her thingy on her head. And Wait, she my question is: in the original game, could you differentiate between the hotspots, or was it like over here where no, everything's it was, it was, a hotspot? No, no, it, all the hotspots were invisible. Yeah, some areas you could click on, some areas you couldn't. Um, when you were scanning with the tricorder, it would only spin if you'd moused over something that had turned into, you know, that was clickable. Um, but yeah, but that's the answer for this one anyway. Yeah. Okay, next time I'm going to freeze the program and I'm going to check out the hotspots. <laughs> what? I can see the makeup. My implant. Yeah, it's. I, I tell you what, understand. switch it back to CD-ROM. Then so Targus's implant works along the same basic principles as the Borg circuit. She might be able to interface. If I switch to CD-ROM, you can barely no. see it's a person. You can't possibly <laughs> be suggesting that Ensign Targus be allowed to interface with the implant. Nobody is suggesting anything of the kind. In truth, Captain, interfacing with the implant would be somewhat like auto neural stimulation, an experience which Ensign Targus is quite familiar with. Exactly. Those are fast things, right? On the DVD, you would see the border of the hotspots. This kind of neural input is yeah, because that's how DVD menus work. Usually, see you've got to the clickable area. Join in on this discussion. You're all talking about me as if I weren't here. Ensign, the long-term effects of your recovery won't. Counselor, the concept of long-term effects loses its meaning when the entire Federation is in danger of obliteration. I'm ready. I think it would be best if the Ensign were immobilized during this. Do it. You could have waited till I sat down. I could have, but I didn't. No, 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 no. I want Sprint to do it. Whatever you have to go through, Targets, will be there for you. Counselor, I've already been through hell and back. I don't think this could be any worse. It fits perfectly. <laughs> Alien technology. Go figure. I should have known. <laughs> She's in agony. You've never had to deal with pain, have you, Sprint? Shut up. Uh, assimilation. Technology. Channels. Subspace channels. The Borg implant taking over systems. Communication with collective. Jam Oscar, systems. please. The Borg implant is getting its orders from the Borg Collective. How do we jam the signals, Targus? Uh, shields. Modulate mutations. 0. 0.6525 normal. Now! Do it! Modulating shield mutation. The Borg cube is scanning us. What's happening with those shields, Mr. Furlong? Almost there, sir. They're firing! Mr. Furlong! 
They've stopped firing. The shield settings must be in sync with the Borg scanners. They sense us as being part of the collective. Ah! Ah! Alone! We are... Resistance is... You will be assimilated! The shield has cut off the Borg circuit from the Borg collective. We've got a disconnector. Ah! Kill me! One more cc of your robot, and she'll be a vegetable for life. Do you want to be responsible for turning Ensign Targus into a Bodian zucchini? Yeah, damn it. Okay, let's see. I can click this. I can click <laughs> this. Oh, I can click this. Mm -hmm. She did say kill me. Question is, should I listen to her? <laughs> okay. I, I... Oh. Look thirsty, aren't you? Wish granted. She's dead. <laughs> you're not supposed to be killing people, Cadet. You're supposed to be saving them. It is a concept your limited cognitive abilities can deal with, isn't it? Or am I wasting my time with you? Don't disappoint me again. <laughs> my question is this. This game was advertised as a game that had... Two, about two hours of newly filmed Star Trek footage. How much of it is actually the golden path of you doing the right things? Is it an hour, 20 minutes? No, to, be, to be fair, haven't, haven't run through all the footage. I'd say it, you can run through the whole thing if you know what you're doing in maybe an hour and 10 minutes, I guess. But there's more than two actual hours of footage in total. Uh, okay. So maybe maybe they they thought it would take you about two, roughly two hours to play through, and that's why they marketed it. I, I guess the other fifty something minutes are just the death scenes and Q yep, mocking various you. Various fail stakes, and yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Okay, let's see. <laughs> um, we'll try this. Oh, come on! All evoke responses are <laughs> negative. She's as good as dead. No, she'd be better off if she were dead. Maybe you should have just shot her. You want to go back and you want to try that? I will shoot her. <laughs> are you sure you want to do this? You saw what it did to Furlon. But then again, you are Bajani. I'll give you a chance to think about it. Wait, there's a fourth choice? Nope. Well, there's always the choice to do nothing. That's the fourth choice. <laughs> oh, great. Now I'm dead. Not exactly what I wanted. Try doing something. Is there a fifth choice? <laughs> Technically, yes, because you've tripped exactly. You've tripped a, a variable within the game. So don't forget, Q didn't tell you not to do it. He just said, "Are you sure you want to do it?" Mm. <laughs> no, you're not dead. You're unconscious. In a Bajani pain trance. Interesting phenomena. I'm not sure what its evolutionary benefit was for the Bajani. Something like a Terran possum, perhaps. Oh, look. You're regaining consciousness. Welcome back, Lieutenant. I guess this means I owe you my life twice, huh, Sprint? No. Time for the commentary. <laughs> MDQP oh, says, I'm not playing it and I hate it already. I've never seen anyone go into a Bajani pain trance before. Interesting. You were clearly unconscious, yet your body managed to finish the task at hand. I suppose it's part of the survival mechanism. Quick thinking. Next time, they'll warn me. While you were out, we did a diagnostic on the computer systems. The Borg implant is continuing to rewrite code. I'm sending an away team over to the Borg cube to see if they can find anything that'll help us disable the implant. Targus and I are going, but we could use a third. I don't know if we'll get out of there alive. I won't order you to go, Lieutenant. 
Oh, we few, we happy few, we band of Borg. They're turning this into some heroic escapade, trying to make it impossible to turn down. I'll go. We don't need you, Quint. We need someone we can trust. Just like old times, huh, buddy? Three against the world. Coming. Okay. Here's your phaser. Each of ours has been retuned to a different frequency. Here, take this. I don't think we need an emergency med kit. If things get that bad, we're probably dead. There are many ways to die. Some of them are more painful than others. There's an emergency hypospray programmable for neuro painkillers just in case. You do know how to use it, don't you? We're coming alongside the Borg cube. Good luck. Energize. Good luck. Energize. Mm -hmm. So this is the Borg cube chapter. Okay. It's the longest chapter in the game. It's got the most choices the most potential fail states and it's where most people get stuck and incredibly frustrated because this is the section i was talking about where i have you have to fail and you have i have to be sure that the user has seen the information they need to see in order to make the right decision so i will i'll give you plenty of hints through this one because if you fail if you if you fail at the same task repeatedly you end up watching the same two or three minutes of footage over and over again and I couldn't think of a way around that because there's vital information in those minutes. So. Okay, no problem. I'll help you through it. <laughs> Fl Fluss World is saying, fun fact, the bridge set was also used for the USS Excelsior in yes. the Voyager episode. In the um, anniversary episode, yeah, with um, Captain Sulu. And AT Machine is saying, this is CD3 of the third. Yes, well, we're, we're moving into the end game. And what else? And Ozzy Ezereth is saying, by the way, I like this new setup you're using for playthroughs with a guest on one side at the top and you on the other at the bottom. Yeah, I changed the, the layout just for you. This is the first time I'm using it. I feel special. S so <laughs> you should be flattered. Oh, there's a fun thing with the tricord here, where if you scan various Borg over and over again, uh, Q gets sarcastic about it and frustrated with constantly doing it. So I can scan them yeah, the same one see, several you, times? Whether you scan the same one or, or different ones, he has Borg, the same loop of responses. Member of the cyborg species. Borg. Part cybernetic, part biological. See Borg. See Borg. There's this reversion. That just tells you about this, an species thing, yeah. rather than the individual. A Borg. Member of the cyborg species. Oh, it's not. Borg. Try exiting and doing it again. Part cybernetic. And a Borg. Member oh. of the cyborg species. In order to activate Borg. it, you have to have scanned the first Borg on the bridge. Part biological. I forgot. Okay. If you have done that, then at this point he starts getting more frustrated about the fact you keep doing it. asking me let's ask Owen well if you want to play through it properly and get mm -hmm. the information you need to make your own decisions you should mm -hmm. shoot them at this point okay. it's a fail state but it's a fail state where you learn information uh, Velvet TK, TK is saying one of the fail states in this chapter is quite interesting as you see all of the actors walk off set oh don't spoil it that's what I was saving I was going to talk you through to that one. Oh man <laughs> I thought he was joking. Is this for real? No, it's real. <laughs> and and Faustian Man says, one time I rented Star Trek, although it turned out to be Sex Trek, the next penetration. <laughs> Worst part is, it wasn't even the next-gen parody. It was the original series. Oh, don't you hate pornography that can't get its parody right? <laughs> I thought I was playing the game.
Mm-hmm. I think that the freeze program is uh, stopping the background buffering in a way. Yeah, I mean, it, it shouldn't do. There's no connection between the functions there. Um, I haven't written any special programming for the video technology in this at all. It's literally using the browser's own control. <laughs> Hold on, buddy. I need you conscious. Don't go into one of your pain. He's getting out his iPad. What is that? Something to counteract the Johnny adrenaline. It's working. Sprint, I'm sorry about that. But you're going to have to deal with the pain just like the rest of us humanoids. This corridor before more of them come. But it's got sprint. Later, that's an order. Was I supposed to memorize that? It's right, you get another chance here. Should I take a screenshot? One, three, three, four, two, three. But that's not in the scanner. The only way you can get that information is to get assimilated. Thank you, Monk Monk. He wrote it in the chat. I think um, the reason they did it in the order they did is most Trek nerds who will have bought this game know that if you ignore the Borg for the most part, they'll ignore you. So most people won't shoot them at that point. Then you don't know the code to put into the console, and then Q tells you to try shooting them first, and then you get them. Okay, so now I'm supposed to just... Not shoot them. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking at, cadet? interface odd why well most of the work we've seen have direct interface abilities why would they need something like this you remember they've already totally assimilated one starfleet officer maybe this is his influence or maybe it's a trick somehow i don't think the borg understand the concept of trick okay security you think you can bypass the borg lockouts and get us the information we need hmm where was that wait freeze program Ah, smart. One, three, three, four, four. two, two. But the UI doesn't give okay. you any indication. 
that you clicked no, it something. Didn't, it, didn't, oh. it didn't in the original. It was even worse in the original. It was laggy. So sometimes you didn't know if you double clicked something or not. You didn't know whether it registered both clicks, so you had to wait to press it twice. It was really frustrating. I'll the admit, 90s. back in the back in the day when I had it, when I played it as a teenager, I didn't manage to beat the game without looking up a walkthrough. It, it was it's, this chapter especially was so frustrating. Almost mm -hmm. as frustrating as these buffer times. <laughs> let's click. Let's go to CD-ROM mode <laughs> and then continue. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of file weight. This has got to be a ping issue. Cause... Yeah, but if I choose a different quality, then probably it restarts the loading of video files, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, it will, in fact. It has to. Because I've got a function running in the background that constantly logs your position into a variable. So when you switch values, it changes the video and then carries on playing from that value. So yeah, it does require a reload. You're right. So I'm not sure why this is taking so long. We'll soon know. Settings. <laughs> CD-ROM. Okay. It's not down downloading the, the MP4 file. Yeah. Hmm. Cancelled. Oh, because you loaded the yeah. other one. You're right. Can you show the um? Wait, the wait, wait. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 191k. Why is it only loaded 191k? Here it comes. <laughs> hmm. Oh, this is fun for the viewers, isn't it? Well, our viewers are are used to having us solve technical difficulties during the live stream itself. So Yeah, but to be it's, fair, it's that's very, probably usually just retro gaming. It's very in line with uh, conversations <laughs> with Curtis, so don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. With uh, with Reaper, we played Reaper. I had to do so many things to make it uh, run smoothly. Like every episode, we had something else. Either we ran out of memory in the virtual machine, yeah. Or or the image and the image of the third CD I think had an issue. So anyway, that's four ATP. Come on. See, it's loaded some and it's jammed up. I wonder yeah. why that is. Hmm. How many people are playing at the moment? Right now. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. <laughs> Having said that, I've got a dedicated server sitting in the same. I mean, I, I, I think thirty minutes ago we had forty live yeah. viewers. Now we have thirty-two, so it's very in line with the ten people that left to add to the fourteen that played earlier today. So now that's twenty-four. And what's the average? Just so uh, we'll all know if this. The average number of people playing simultaneously. No, the average usually. How many people play the side, uh, play the game? Um, honestly, this this keeps concurrent. going viral. Every, every now and then, someone posts uh, tweets about it or posts about it, and I suddenly see a massive up upswing in my metrics. So it hasn't been level at any point. <laughs> so I can't really give you an answer of what an average is. That must be it. Contact terminated with assimilation implant. I fixed must it. must be abort time sequence. Yay. Oh, I need a code for accessing the implant. If we can find a way to interface safely with the implant, we can feed it the sequence and then order it to shut down. If it's anything like this terminal, it's going to look for a Borg signature. Damn, if we still had that dead Borg circuit, we could use that to convince the implant we were Borg. That's not a bad idea. But the circuit was fried. So we'll get another one. There's no shortage of Borg around here. Get that circuit. Shoot him or not? Not. But oh, now go on shoot him. Oh, let it time out now. Let it time. Out. Oh, okay. Yeah, there. Whether you shoot him or Targa shoots him, he ends up shot. It's another one of those fail states you're meant to go through to know what to do next. Wait, so I I'm supposed to stop her from shooting him? Yeah, but go through. But you meant to figure that out. Three to be directly to computer core control room. It's another one of those really cheap puzzles no, I just... um, that people get stuck on. 
just yet. You have to wait until the target steps in and then click. Which is really And then nasty. click on her? Yeah. Click on her. Actually, I think I made the hotspot the entire oh, screen, so just because you get very little time. Left, but we still don't know what it's doing. It's rewriting all of our systems to make them compatible with Borg systems. I thought our shield setting cut its subspace channel off from the Collective. It did, but it's following a pre-programmed set of instructions. We have to give it an abort order, but first we've got to convince it that we're Borg. How do we do that? We use this circuit as a buffer in the interface. It has an individual Borg designation. I remember from my experience with it, everything is filtered through that designation. The rocket of Captain Anderpoff. What is it, Counselor? Captain, the Borg cube has just started a series of random scans. They're looking for us. I don't know how long we have before they find out that we're not actually part of their cube. Uh, the interface looks pretty simple. Sprint. Attach the circuit to the Borg implant. No. Let me. Maybe I should do it. What? Whenever we see people smiling, I know that it's the wrong choice. Try giving it a command. It's just a tease. Unable to comply. Updating systems information. It's trying to catch up on what it missed. Unable to comply. Or designate Alpha Set Alpha. Oh, come on. Is no longer a functioning unit. Disengage that circuit now. Information assimilated. Retuning shields. Shield detection is being altered. The implant has re-established communication with the Borg Collective. Bridge! Evasive maneuvers now! The shields are dropping! The only good Borg! We needed a live one. Contact terminated with assimilation implant. That must be a Borg time sequence. No, I think it's a code for accessing the implant. If we can find a way to interface safely with the implant... So this is one of those moments where it can get frustrating. You end up seeing the it's same bit of footage over and over again. But it's quite important you know that code 61330 later on. Here. So I, keep, I, could, I could jump people back to the point where you're about to choose to shoot the drone or not. And there are other ways you can see that number, but it's quite important to hammer it home as much as possible because it becomes vital later, so you really want people to note it down. So Joseph Austin asked in the chat, for those who are playing it, have you seen these leg spikes too, or is it just Daniel seeing it? And Gamers Grotto, who's apparently playing it, says there are indeed leg spikes. That must be the number of people playing at the same time, then, I guess. I mean, I'm not getting paid for this. I've got to run it on live and run it. That's not a bad idea. But the circuit was fried. So we'll get another one. There's no shortage of Borg around here. Get that circuit. Okay, should I click her when she enters the screen? Yes, yes, do Okay, let's do this. Come on, come on. I'm hyped. There. No, 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 Sprint's right. We need a living boy. Yeah. <laughs> so now you need to figure out how to get a living board back on the ship. I'll use his uh, cheap ass laptop. <laughs> There's got to be something we can use on the board that'll stun them without killing them. So this is where you're meant to scan the hypo spray. This thing? That's the one. Medical hypo spray. Experimental model. Programmable. 
uses baseline replicator technology capable of delivering up to 200 different non-zero biological catalysts. Okay. So we've got further reading down the left there. All of this? Mm -hmm. Human adrenaline. Wait, do I need neural block? How much do you want me to tell you? How much do you want to work out on your own? I want you to tell me everything. Well, if you want to knock out a Borg without killing it, you want neural level three neural block. Okay. Level three humanoid neural block. Paralytic. Safe for humanoids with neural resistance of 15 or less. Capable of stopping a Palakan rhino in its tracks. Deadly, the most known humanoid species. Except a few. Okay, so I'm supposed to um, yeah, use the same sequence? Yeah, exactly. Level yeah. three humanoid neural block. So I think it's one, three. Safe for humanoids with neural resistance. One, three, one, two. 15 or I think it's less. one, three, one, two. Let's see. Capable of two, three, one, three. Rhino in its tracks. Two, three, one. Deadly, the most known humanoid. Two, three, one, three. And Gamers Grotto says, don't sweat it, Owen. Given that you did this all yourself, it is amazing. You should be very proud of yourself, as we are of you. And we are. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, because you're the reason why, why we're all here, because I would have never played it uh, after we had issues with... Uh, Windows 95 uh, virtual machine. This one is an absolute swine to get running. DOSBox is a nightmare. It will run in DOSBox, but getting the settings dialed in is, is horrible. And I ended up running it myself for testing purposes in a Windows 95 VM. And that's when you run into some of the um, reactive issues. Like it, it's, um, again, using the original game, you're meant to double click to pause the video, and then you can use the tricorder. And half the time, it just does not register your clicks. It's, it's really nasty like that. So it's another reason for building it in the first place. But yeah, thank you. Really, thank you for the positive feedback. I love to hear it. It makes it worth worth doing it because otherwise I'm just wasting my time on putting this stuff out there and it gets ignored. So thank, thank you, you. Owen. <laughs> Cheers. Do you think you're fast enough? Do you really think that's going nope, to work on No, I don't think that at all. <laughs> oh man, what now? I'll tell you what, this this one at least is a short loop. So if you want to click him, I, I'll tell you it will fail, but it's a short fail state. You didn't check the tricorder. I have no biological components. You should have waited for one of the others. Actually, there's some vital information in this fail state as well. Hold on, buddy, we need you conscious. Don't go to one of your pain transitions. Ah! Johnny Pain Trance. Your friend Furlong wasn't able to stop it. The Borg don't seem to notice, though. They're assimilating you at this very moment. At least this time, you won't feel it. Oh, it looks like you're waking up. So awesome. You can see her contact lenses. <laughs> Detail. Interesting. Borg, yet not Borg. Do you feel it? It's different this time, isn't it? Checking me, Beta. Alpha set of three. Alert. Destroy. Unassimilated life form. Destroy. Alert. Destiny Beta, Alpha Seven Three. Destroy, destroy. Yay! Now that was the right action, proving to yourself that you didn't have to listen to that nasty old Borg collective. True, you are dead, but now you know something you didn't know before, right? Well then, it was worth the trouble. So if, if he pulls I him, mean, yeah. I mean, at this point, he's breaking the fifth wall. <laughs> he's not just talking to us directly. He's talking to us as someone who's playing the game with us. Um, 
Oh, I need to, to type the thingy again. Well, you can if you like. I mean, the, the way the progression is generally meant to go is, yes, you use that same one. Um, you don't click on Q. Another one comes along, you can use it on them. Um, the thing you learn in that cutscene just there is if you go into a Bajani pain trance as they're assimilating you, mm -hmm. you still, you're still you. You're not taken over by the collective. So that's just something to keep in mind. But yeah, do do the same code for now and then try it on the next board. So, and the next board. What was oh, it? 2313? Yeah. I think it was 2313, yeah. Do you think you're fast enough? Do you really think that's going to work on me? No, because, because <laughs> of the previous death scene. You'll be back. Maybe more than once. What up? What were you waiting for? He's alive. I'll wait to the righteous. Furlong! Sprint! I've got to get Furlong out of here. Hold them off. I'll be back. Request a bean out, for God's sake. Didn't anyone ever teach you to watch your back? What? But this time you're not in a Bajani pen trance, and you see the interface is all green. So you have no, you have no free will. That's the thing you meant to learn. Oh, I think... Yeah, this this is the next time you see that 61330 code. And they give you a little more information with that numeric pad layer. Yeah, I thought I'd talk you through this one because so many people just get stuck here watching this loop over and over again and it can get so frustrating. Wait, something... No, there's no, cho there's no choices. Because you're bored, so... Now you know how to disarm the implant. If only you weren't a slave to the Collective. You could go back to the Righteous and save them. If only. So if you check the tricorder. Oh. Oh, okay, you've done it. Now. <laughs> Wait, was I supposed um, to do something else? Yes. So what we've learned from those few bits is if you're in a Bajani pain trance when you get assimilated, you still have your free will. So what you're meant to do is use the hypo spray to induce a Bajani pain trance in yourself. I see. And that's the way forward, which we, we can't. And really I do this by way, scanning. Uh, yeah, if you go to the, yeah the hyper. Um, well, if you scan any of the characters at the top, uh, mm -hmm. actually not 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 Q. Let's go with Targus or Furlong. Okay. Um, you've also got Targus, Lieutenant Academy um, class got Sprint, Lieutenant Chorus, which is you. Lieutenant Chorus. And then you can look up information Bajani. about class of what, who the Bajani, what the Bajani are. Is, this is a kind of a long way to get the information. You're meant to read all of this. Mm -hmm. And through all this, you learn that, yeah, Bajani pain trance is caused by adrenaline. So if you inject yourself with Bajani adrenaline, you will go into a pain trance. So then you don't get fully assimilated. Which is why I had to look up a walkthrough. And I can do this without seeing us on the scanner? Of two, three, six, you five. can do it. It will work if you put the right code in without having read this. I've given you all of Sprint's personal um, memories and some of his professional ones. But the way you're meant to so figure it out is through reading all this crap. Things like that silly secret hand but if we continue at this point, when you get to that second Borg, you have the option to inject the Borg or to inject yourself. Because your hand is on its shoulder. Do you think you're fast enough? In, you the second you Borg, you mean? Work on me? Yeah, the second Borg, yeah. So I'm ignoring him, and with the second Borg, I'm in injecting myself. Yourself, correct? Yeah. You'll be back, maybe more than mm. once. What were you waiting for? In the hand on the left. You 
didn't leave a mark. Because it's a prop. This hypo spray is set to stun a Borg. I don't know what it'll do to Pajani. I do. It'll kill you. You're a Bajani, not a Borg. None of these settings are going to do you any good until you learn a little something about your own species. Pause it a sec. Do you want to see the um, fun fail state that was mentioned earlier? Yep. Yep. In that case, tap in any old random crap. Not a, not a real, or just leave it to time out, let it time out, and then inject yourself. I think that will do it. Really serves. I was quite generous with the timing here, I think. Or the original game was it? Do you think you're fast enough? Do you really think that's going to work on me? You'll be back. Maybe more than once. Do they even knew people would get stuck here? What were you waiting for? That's how they got the their 40 hours of gameplay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sprint, what are you doing? Wasting time. This is not set for a Bajani. Uh, I think I need to renew myself in some alternate reality. Come on, everybody, let's go. Such an amateur. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> okay, so. No, don't yet pause it. If you go to the scanner, mm -hmm. what you actually want to do is inject yourself with Bajani adrenaline. So okay. if, you, if you scan the hypo spray, what, what up? This you, one? You got it. Yep. Medical and check the entry for Bajani adrenaline, not adrenaline block. Bajani That's the one. Adrenaline. I think it's 1331. Yeah. 1331. Bajani adrenaline. Yeah, 1331. Let's do this. 1331. Do you think you're fast enough? Do you really think that's going to work on me? Yeah, everywhere else in the game, I tried to shift the respawn, the restart points, to reduce the amount of rewatch as You'll much as back. possible. Maybe but in the ball queue, yeah, that, that was a real challenge. What were you waiting for? I presume that the waiting time for the choices is not something that you can control because you had to use not the same exactly. scenes. Amount of time as the footage, yeah. It's not like you look you loop them back and forth. Sprint. What it would be done? noticeable. He sent himself into a Bajani pain trance. <laughs> ah, killed him. <laughs> oh, smart move. Sending yourself into a Bajani trance before you get Borgified. I only hope you're in time to stop them before they Borgify your friends. Borgify. <laughs> Wait! Wait, I think it's him. It's still Sprint. The weird triangle hand thing. All right, we'd better get out of here before it's crawling with Borg. Oh, wait, team to right. It's three to beam directly to computer core. Now. Wait, Captain. no! No, it's all right. Here's that number again. The Borg implants programming is shutting Six, down. It's one three three zero. We have complete control again, sir. Hey. Captain, I have a message from Admiral Hansen. 
We are engaging the Borg. The Righteous is ordered to remain outside the battle until all first and second line defenses are exhausted. At your discretion, that was all, sir. And so it begins. You mean there's nothing we can do? Not until we're called into action by either the Admiral or the Borg. They also serve who sit and wait, Lieutenant. Let's get a battle ready. This is a still image. Ugh, I just hate sitting here <laughs> doing nothing. Worried that the Ken battle Burns will be won without you, Targus? Worried that the battle will be lost without us. You overestimate your importance to the situation, Ensign. The battle is already lost. Keep your cynicism to yourself, Quint. I'm just telling the truth. I'm afraid he may be right. Things aren't going very well. Oh, not you too, Lieutenant. It's important to have a positive outlook, even in the bleakest of situations. It doesn't get much bleaker than this. What? Nothing. I was just thinking about Kalen. Kalen? My son. What were you thinking? <laughs> I think by now all my friends are tired of hearing me brag about Kalen. I'm sure they don't want to hear anymore. Did you hear that sprint? You don't want to hear Furlong talking about his whiny brat now, do you? Uh, freeze it a sec. It's showing you now you've got three options. Um, you've got his face, his torso, or lower down. And I'm going to let you know, I'm going to let you make the choice. If you click his face, you'll punch him in the nose. If you mm -hmm. click his chest, you'll just push him out of the way. And then you get to hear Furlong talk more about you as a character, his son. People's general favorite is if you click lower, lower down, you will knee him in the balls. So given yeah. that you don't get to come back and make this choice again, I thought I'd let you know and you can pick which one you want to do. Okay. So which one do you prefer? that I choose. Me personally, I mean, you get a bit more backstory if you could push him away and hear about hear your father talk about you, but really it's just schmaltz, so it's a lot more fun to kick him in the nuts. <laughs> Come on, Quint. You'll be okay. Just catch your breath. Crazy if Borg in the chat is saying, so click him in the lower decks. Thank you. <laughs> Very <laughs> the psychology, counselor. You don't have the tools to analyze me. Your problem is very straightforward, Doctor. You desperately want to be liked. If I wanted to be liked, all I'd have to do is snap my fingers and I'd be liked. I'm an omnipotent being masquerading as Dr. Quint. Whatever I want to happen, happens. Interesting fantasy. <laughs> all right, let's play that through. Then why don't you? Why don't I what? Make everyone like you. Because I don't want to. No, because you want them to like you of their own free will. And phenomenologically speaking, you can't force them to do something of their own free will. Sophistry, Baraka. Truth, Quint. Let me give you some free advice. If you want to be liked, try making yourself likable. Ah! Subspace message, sir. No audio. Read it, Ensign. Orders from Admiral Hansen deploying third wave attack when ready. Battle stations. Take us in, Targus. Maximum power to the shields. Spread fire phases. Keep the frequency changing and get those torpedoes online. Sir. Keep those faces firing, and where are my photon torpedoes? Armed and ready, sir. Let's see if we can shake them up a little, Ensign. Yes, sir. Initiating Delta attack. I'm reading a small weakness in the shields. Shields are holding five, but power is down 10%. Weapons having no effect. Damn. They've adjusted their shields already. Here we are again, back at the beginning. But this time, you are security, instead of that little mass of an Ensign. The Tolstoy just took a major hit. Are you going to be able to save him or not? I think she's pulling away. The Kyushu's coming on strong. Saratoga and Melbourne have lost power. Tolstoy, Kyushu, Saratoga, Melbourne, all ships that were lost at Wolf 359. Will they be adding Righteous to the list? Captain! Intruder alert. Security, isolate the ops console. At 0800 hours during the Battle of Wolf 359, the USS Righteous was hit by a Borg weapons discharge and vaporized. It's in your hands. Security!
Here you go. Here we go. What? It's the code Remember from the before. Six one exactly. three three zero. Six one three three zero. <laughs> Shielditation is modulating. The board team is pulling away, sir. It's ignoring us completely as if we weren't here. It thinks we've been vaporized. For a minute there, I thought we would be. Where is it headed, Ensign? Direct course for Sector 001, sir. I wonder what chance the Starfleet forces have of stopping the Borg at Earth. Actually, they will succeed. The Enterprise, utilizing the emergency transporters on the shuttlecraft, will recapture their Borgified Picard and stop the Borg incursion just in the nick of time. And how do you know that, Quint? I told you already. I'm an omnipotent being. Who are you? And what happened to Dr. Quint and Lieutenant Sprint? And what have you done to my crew? I'm afraid the lieutenant died about four hours ago. Not my doing. He was supposed to die. Just as all of you, I'm afraid, are supposed to be vaporized here at Wolf 359. That's how it's written in the history books. History? Are you telling us you're from the future? He is. I am, well, as I said, I exist outside the confines of the space-time continuum. That is, if I want to. My little friend here wanted a chance to come back and save this ship from destruction. And to my great surprise, he succeeded. So you were just pretending to be Sprint. Why? Who are you? Kayla. Please. I'm trying to figure this out. As I said, I didn't expect Cadet Kalen to succeed here. And now that he has, I'm in kind of a bind. I don't, uh... Of course. According to history, we've disappeared from Wolf 359 at exactly 0800 hours. If we stay here alive, it corrupts the timeline. Our future, but Kaylin's past. What are you going to do? Well, the easy thing would be to just obliterate you all, but then that wouldn't be fair now, would it? On the other hand, I do want to protect the timeline. Are we dead? Uh. Oh, I don't think so. Where are we, Lieutenant? We are still at Wolf 359, sir. The real question is when are we? According to the navigational charts, correcting for time, we have jumped ahead more than 10 years. It's clever. I don't understand. We disappeared from Wolf 359 exactly when history says we did. Timeline is unaffected, we're still alive. Thanks to you, Cadet. If you hadn't come back to get us, we'd be dust. Captain, what about Quint? Oops. This is the same way the MCU tries to close plot holes in their exactly. cinematic universe. <laughs> I we changed the timeline. <laughs> Where am I? What's going on? Wait, I don't think I want to know. Captain, I'm picking up the vessel 34 Mark 216, heading on a course for Earth. It's the Borg. What are your orders, sir? We're a Starfleet ship in Federation space. We may be 10 years behind the times, but I bet we know a thing or two more about the Borg than anyone else in this time. Lay in a pursuit course. I, uh. I think I'm going to enjoy getting to know you. Cadet for a long. Course laid in, sir. Engage. Oh, snap! There you go. That was awesome. <laughs> the end. Wait, did you create this animation? No, God, no, I would have done a much better job. That's ugly.
<laughs> wow. And if you watch through the credits, it literally it just loops you back to the start of the game. Wait, let me... Turn down the volume of the game. Okay, this was great. I don't. I'm not sure. Do you think we saw all of the video footage? Given the fact that every choice I made was the wrong one, and so we saw <laughs> all of the bad choices. Uh, still no. I mean, like, like I said, when when you first get um, borgified, as they like to say, and end up going to the bridge, there are like five or six different choices you can make there, all of which are fail states. And um, similarly, again, at other points in the game, um, when you go back to the righteous. With the circuit that you took from the dead Borg, there are several choices you can make there. Yeah, there's there's quite a few different things. There's quite a lot of footage in there. Wow. So is it more than two hours? Because when something is advertised as more than two hours of something, it's usually two hours in one minute. Uh, without going back and checking the... I'll tell you what, I'll go back and check the files. Why not? <laughs> I can tell you how long it is entirely. So you know, in know. the Star Trek Klingon game, the third disc is playable on audio CD. So you can learn Klingon. Yes. In fact, I believe there was a program on there um, which had voice recognition. Supposedly meant that you, you know, it could test you on how well you've learned Klingon. But Voice recognition in 1996. Yeah, it, it wasn't great. <laughs> um, I actually, weirdly, I actually I did buy Star Trek Klingon back in the day because obviously I, I was and, and remain a big Star Trek fan. That's why I did this. Um, but for whatever reason, it did not like my, my computer. Borg ran fine. But Klingon, there was something to do with the Vaser driver it didn't like. So I ended up taking it back to PC World where I bought it, and that's where I saw Wing Commander 4, and that's when I bought it, and that's how I ended up oh, with that. Um, and the rest is history. Franchise. And that, yeah. But let me just see. Uh, to... So Fluss World is asking, is Owen, do you also plan to remaster Star Trek Klingon? It's, it's a question I get a lot. That one um, comes with its own challenges. Um, there isn't as high quality footage available. It's it's I, it's got a different interface. I have to. It's not a matter of plugging that video into what I've already built. There is no engine for this. I've written effectively a big fat long decision tree with a load of logic in it in in JavaScript, and I'd have to do roughly the same thing again. And yeah, the the big thing that's kind of pushing me towards no is that the it just wouldn't look very good. The the availability of the video source. That, that I have at hand, which would be only the original CD-ROM, would not lend itself to remastering and upscaling very well. I mean, it would look better than it looked on the CD, but it still wouldn't look very good. So I can... Yeah. So Feklayer that... Targ video says there was a Japanese iOS release of Klingon 10 years ago. You know, I mentioned earlier that um, I had a friend who um, asked if I'd ever heard of the DVD, and that's what got me back on the path of revisiting this. That was mm -hmm. Feklayer Targ. He's a friend of mine. Oh. on discord so hi feck hope you're okay and yet he's he has mentioned to me in the past that there was an ios version and if i can if i can somehow get my hands on it and see if i can get the footage out of it that might be higher quality than the original cd rom it probably is it might not it might still not be up there with dvd so if i can get my hands on that i'll look into it but i'm making no promises basically and also again as i said i did nothing but this for two months straight it completely sucked up my time and i'm not in a rush to do it again uh, I think... I'll get to a point where I'll find it interesting enough, that I, then I'll get around to it, but it, we'll have to see how it goes. You know, in some cases, the remastering of something doesn't have to be higher quality video. Just the fact that it's accessible to people, you know, people who That's can't true. run Star Trek Borg and who but couldn't run it for under... the past two decades can play it now. That's true, but you, you may be underestimating just how bad the old FMV would look scaled up on a, a big-ass screen these days without... I mean, I swear to this day, it was the same with Wing Commander 4. The reason they put that interlacing over the top wasn't for reasons of performance. I think they could have just scaled the video up to 640 by 480 VGA resolution. It was to hide the artifacts. Just would have, yeah, exactly. It would have looked like ass. I reckon that's the reason behind it. Um, so bear with me one second. If I go to details, let it calculate. Oh, no, that's interesting. I must be looking at the wrong files because it's, it's Mark estimating... Mark, Klingon is not a first-person shooter. It's a... Uh... It's pretty much like this game, just with Klingons. Yeah. Actually, 
I can play the Star Trek Klingon trailer while <laughs> we're at it. Star Trek Klingon. Well, that's interesting. According to this, there's an hour and 24 of footage, but I think it's calculating it wrong because it felt like there was more than that to me. Wait a second. Okay. okay. Let's see if I can get this to run. Okay. Hey, look, there. YouTube is advertising the live stream that we're currently <laughs> live streaming. Fantastic. Okay, let me just turn up the volume on Chrome. And let's watch the trailer. For the first time in history, you have the chance to become a part of the most feared race in the galaxy. Come. This it isn't is what the footage looks like in the game, by the way. This is a VHS This Earth. is how Phantasmagoria 2 looks. It's fine. The path of his grandfather's. <laughs> New CD ROM game. Star this Trek doesn't look like this. Klingon. This is no ordinary game. It's 90 minutes of full screen, full motion, interactive action with you in control. Are you ready? And your guide is the head of the Klingon High Council, Gowron himself. You have a duty to perform. Do it. You learn to think like a Klingon. Will you come? Yes. With your Klingon dagger. This is your cursor. You make all the critical choices. Indecision is death. We're still thinking like a human. Bob! Starring Robert O'Reilly of the Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Today, you are a warrior. Star Trek Klingon. Only on CD ROM. Only on CD ROM. They, they used to lie so hard in those trailers because, yeah, again, they they obviously made that from the source footage. It's not nothing like what it looked like in the actual game. That's such a cheat. I know. It's the same with Phantasmagoria. Um, yeah. Fan, um, Dory got a VHS tape of the trailer for the game, and I think it's the only uh, footage that we have that's 30 frames per second and not the horrendous 120 by 80 or whatever with five yeah. frames per second. So, yeah. So, anyway, the, the wing, um, wing Commander. Mm, wing Commander so, full remastered. So, so, you're telling me it won't be out for a few years at best? Yeah, at best. I mean, at least another couple of years. We have actually set... Oh, that, that reminds me, actually. I'm obviously also the web um, designer for the project, and I need to update our FAQs because back in August, we finally settled on a release date, which off the top of my head I can't remember. <laughs> but it's, um, I think it's the, if it must be, tell you what, it'll be 2026. It's three years away because that's the um, 30th anniversary of the game. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I know. I see your face. What do you guys it's need? Another pandemic to stick around? <laughs> At home and work. I mean, that is long that hours. Is, can I tell you what? That, that is half the problem because we're a very, very small team. I think there, there's three of us in the core. Um, uh, a couple of other, oh, uh, more because we've got Mr. Coffee and um, film composer. They're the two guys who are working on our sound, one for sound effects and one for audio. Um, we're the we're the core team, and we've got an amazing number of people from the Wing Commander fan community who chip in and help out. So you know, I've reverse engineered the files from this particular area where you can have my data and it's, those guys are really helping out but in terms of a core team there's very few of us um and we're all doing it in our spare time i mean it's quite frankly astonishing i, I managed to take two months off in order to um, work on on borg but as i say that the stuff i do for the project is is mainly fmv based and a little bit of 2d and, and texture um stuff and a bit of animation here and there so i'm i'm not at the moment, not needed because the project is currently working mainly on uh, developing visual assets, 3D models, and the code, the underlying code behind the game. But yeah, it's it's going to be a long time because, as I say, there's a demo you can get on our website that's that's playable on wcrespace.com if anyone would like to check it out, uh, which shows that we've got a working engine. The assets are running. The um, the 3D models look fantastic. The engine is f perfectly functional, but. The entire game has specific um, requirements for areas of for areas of the game, for the game flow, for the bits on the ship, for the individual missions. All have their own requirements, and all of these need to be programmed and figured out, and reverse engineered, and all kinds of things. It's a lot of work. 
Yeah. And I guess you, you can't uh, launch a Patreon campaign for this because it will be problematic mm-hmm. legal wise. Yeah. Exactly, because we don't own the rights. I mean, we've got obviously a disclaimer on the site saying uh, this this is a mod. You need to buy the original game. You've either got to own it or you've got to go and buy it from GOG or um, Origin or whatever they're calling Origin these days, EA. Uh, and yeah, it doesn't help that it's EA because, of course, EA are famously litigious, um, not supportive of fan communities. They've been surprisingly okay with Wing Commander fans in the past, possibly because technically it's a dead IP. They don't have any intentions to do anything with it. But Nobody I think, yeah, cares it about dead IPs. They, they still retain the rights and refuse to exactly yeah let them go and i think if we were to profit from it in any way they'd understandably have an issue with that so yeah we won't we won't we won't ask for any money we're doing it entirely as a passion project because it's probably the safest route and we and we're happy to do it because we enjoy it so since we discussed uh, the phantasmagoria to vhs Mm. tapes let me show you let's see the digitized version so this is for so dialogue think, translation and the so thing these are is scans from from vhs are they yeah we got the vhs tapes there were 25 year old vhs tapes mm. and so they show their age yeah now the the thing is because it's a dialogue translation and the purpose of this vhs tape is for dialogue translation then the left channel is for sound effects and music and the right channel is for the audio which is supposed to be silenced for kill anyone of course you do so the, oh, the yes, great the vhs wibblies yeah the, it's got the wibblies so so the thing is that the game itself was um, cropped before it was released so a lot of the yeah. footage here contains things that aren't in the game itself and it's also 30 frames per second it was recorded on a, a sony beta cam Dr. Ricky Harburg's mm. office, how may I help you? hi uh my name's curtis craig and i was referred to uh, dr harberg by um, somebody and i was so uh, the, the quality you know, isn't all that shabby yeah but well uh, the the issue people always think upscaling and true enough upscaling is all about resolution um, I do a lot of other things on my YouTube channel and releasing old TV shows and films and things that never got we either never in HD or I think could be upscaled to 4K. And yeah, upscaling is definitely all about resolution. Um, I refer to the stuff I tinker with as remastering because I don't just drop the footage into um, I use Topaz Video AI. Uh, it's the program I use for AI upscaling. I don't mm-hmm. just drop the footage in there. I usually um, tinker around with the image first before doing that. I do all kinds of things to clean it up, sharpen it if I can. And um, analog videotape is a swine because as well as being low resolution, it's soft. And the AI has a particular problem with it's, if, if, an, if an image is soft around the edges, if you've got a lot of blur between where edges should be, it, it kind of visualizes that as part of the image. And when you upscale it, it maintains it. So you make it bigger, sure. And technically you make it higher resolution, but you don't make it any sharper. You don't make it any crisper. And it just ends up looking, you, you might as well have just stuck at the original size and let the hardware do the upscaling in real time. So when exactly does it do a good better. work when it comes to recognizing artifacts and removing them? It doesn't for the most part. The thing I do, I do that myself. Uh, the, the applica- the, uh, so Topaz Video AI isn't really for that. It's literally, it can do certain other things like it can remove interlacing if you've got interlaced footage. Um, baked in inter- interlacing where you've got a progressive video but the interlacing artifacts are still in there from when it was interlaced that's a horrifying issue usually to remove and um, topaz ai does a great job of removing that if you play around with it a bit um, but for removing blotches artifacts and um, it, it's not an application for remastering it's an application for upscaling so all that stuff i do manually in scripting languages first and then i run it through the upscaler i get comments on my channel every now and then on things i've put with people saying you know it's this isn't a remaster it's just an upscale and i can tell you what it kind of winds me up because i do make my own master copies it's literally a remaster i take whatever was available on dvd tv capture whatever you can get your hands on and i, I make a new master set out of it and then i upscale it so you know um and yeah vhs is always a challenge even, and sometimes it's not even if, it, if the source is VHS. Sometimes the source can be DVD. But as we were discussing earlier, because something something may have been shot on film or shot on digital, but if it was mastered on analog tape, those softness artifacts come in, and that's where you get problems. And it beca- 
if you if you try to induce sharpness into an image, there are certain ways around it, but it's generally done by um, post processing, and that tends to lead to ghosting artifacts. So wherever you've got a defined edge, it will make it sharper, but you'll get fuzz. Like you'll get um, brightness and luma ch um, channels that get slightly off shifted, so you end up with ghosting artifacts around the edges. Things can be done to make it look better, but there's rarely anything you can do to actually make it look good. You can improve it, but you can't make it look so, so if you have the same footage on VHS and on DVD, even if the DVD is of lower quality in general, uh, in yeah, that particular well, case, you'd prefer to have the DVD and yeah. upscale it than use yeah. the higher quality VHS because of the artifacts? Exactly. Be yeah, because of the softness. There, there is no avoiding it um, with that, anal that form of analog technology. Fuzziness happens. It, it just softens the image. And a soft image is always a swine to work with. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but so, as I say, there are things that can be done. There are various routines you can run it through. But um, in general, at the moment, the way things stand, attempting to sharpen an image introduces other artifacts, which can then be more problematic than the original. So it's, it's always a, a difficult balancing act. Um, having said that, the technology I tinker with purely as an enthusiast, this is not what I do professionally, is improving all the time. Um, a new version of Topaz Video I released yesterday, which I'm, I'm yet to actually t play with too much because I haven't had the time yet. So for all I know, half of what I'm saying is now defunct as of yesterday. <laughs> I just don't know. But yeah, I mean, like I say, I've been playing around this with this for about three years, and I've gone through, for the Wing Commander project, for example, I've gone through 10 versions of the video files because the technology keeps improving or I figure out something new and my processes improve. It, it comes and goes. You're just like Roberta Williams because Phantasmagoria was supposed to be released in 1994, and then by the time they were done working on that version, new tools were coming out. And so they reworked a lot of the things, the 3D animations and the FFV yep. and the compression in general. So you're kind of like Roberta Williams back in 1995. It's always the way you're constantly running alongside technology. Uh, if, if you're lucky, you can keep up with it. You can keep pace, but half the time you're chasing it. Um, things will always improve. I mean, um, this is why you know, I, I hammered out my work on on Borg Remastered for a couple of months. It got to a point where it worked, and I thought, ah, screw it, I'm going to release it. Uh, there were things I could have played around with, could have tinkered with a bit more, and there were some quality of life improvements I still intend to go back and, and tinker with. But it was working, it was ready, you know, people could play it. I thought, oh, I'll just stick it out there. Because, you know, you, you, get, if you get to a point that if you just keep playing around with it, you'll never release it, whatever it is. You've got, which I, that's kind of why we set ourselves a hard deadline with the Wing Commander project, because it's going to be the 30 year anniversary. We can't imagine that the amount of work we have left will take longer than three years, unless something goes horribly wrong in our personal lives, obviously. Yeah, but that um, doesn't count. So the hard, hard, hard deadline in three years. We think it's doable. <laughs> and that should give us some time to polish up a bit as well and get to a point where we're ready. So, yeah, but without, if you don't set yourself a deadline or make the decision at some point to just say it's done. You'll just keep tinkering with it forever. And it'll never get released, and that's obviously especially difficult for um, hobby projects and fan projects when you know you don't have any shareholders or publisher or anybody draw or a boss or in a bottom line saying, you know, this is getting too expensive or whatever. I mean, if, God, if we were doing this um, professionally, I'd hate to think what our time would have cost at this point because we've been working on it so much. But who knows? But yeah, you've got to make a decision at some point. It's time to go. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, Paul always thinks that Phantasmagoria 2 was the game that killed the FMV genre. And that was released in November 1996. But I think that uh, one of the other 1996 FMV games was the culprit for the death of the FMV genre. So which game do you think killed it? Now that I played Ripper, I think Ripper killed it. <laughs> Ripper was quite something, wasn't it? So that was at least one I actually played myself and I know of. Um, I mean, we were, you and I, I know, were having a brief conversation before the stream started, and you asked what FMV games have I played. And I mentioned Ripper and Borg, uh, and I never got around to Klingon. And I said, do you think Wing Commander 3 and 4 count? And then I ran out of ideas, apart from some really naff ones from the Mega CD or Sega CD. For those in America, I played um, Sewer Shark and uh, Ground Zero Texas. I always... I have intentional choice, avoided Night Trap, never played it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically me run out of FMV games to talk, oh, apart from the more modern ones that we've had in, in, in Resurgence. Uh, I can't really think of any others, certainly none that I played. So go on, what, what do you think it was? So, so, so then, after we uh, discussed the whole uh, which game killed the, the FMV genre, 
we played the X Files FMV game, and that was released in <laughs> 1998, and it was successful. So, but no other FMV game came out after that. Oh, so, that. so maybe it was so successful they decided to just cancel the genre. Well, this is the pinnacle. We can't do any better. We, we've hit peak. I, I think that specifically with X Files, they already had the set ready because it was the set from yeah. the show. It, it was filmed as if it was another episode, pretty crappy episode, but an episode nonetheless. Um, and that's it. So I, I'm not sure if anything from 1996 killed off the, the genre. But which which of the new FMV games have you been playing? Uh, I played Her Story. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, mm -hmm. I played, uh, let's see, this is me and names now, um, Jenks the Detective, uh, where you um, have to interview Contradiction? Suspects. Contradiction, thank you. I played Contradiction. And just, uh, I played The Bunker. Uh, see, we wanted these, to play The Bunker. How oh, yeah. You? Did you like it? it was, yeah, it was pretty good, actually. I really enjoyed it. And I started another one. See, this is the problem I, I tend to find with FMV games. If, if it's not something that really latches onto me that I really love, like, like with most FMV games, there isn't a great deal of replayability. So I'll play them once, and I might remember them, but I won't tend to go back to them. So I'm awful with the titles. I mean, I played another modern one from a couple of years ago um, that was all about um, a, a biological outbreak. I think it got released before COVID, so, you know. Um, I can't remember the title of that one. And I think it's called, called the pandemic. The we all lived through it back in 2020. Yeah. Um, but there was also one where you play. There was, it was meant to be sort of set in London and ran the. Uh, you were a driver, at the criminal underground. But I don't think I even finished that one, so I can't remember what it was called. But I have been. I've just been glad to see there's been a resurgence in popularity for it because, of course, the technology exists now that they don't look like crap. <laughs> really yeah, anything, it's much FNB cheaper. Just, yeah. You know, we, we talked to, to the people from the Aveki Studios and they created their first FMV game for, I think, 5,000 pounds. That was the entire cost of the production. Yeah. And the thing that Phantasmagoria 2 cost four and a half million and Phantasmagoria 1 cost yeah. also four and a half million. So, yeah. but I guess I you can... Now you can film the the entire FMV game with your phone. Yeah, I mean, as, exactly. As long as you've got um, decent stability um, rigs and everything, so it doesn't just look like. Unless, of course, the aesthetic you're going for is Blair Witchy handshaky found footage. Yeah, it's not it's not expensive now to get um, a decent rig, a, a stabilized um, gimbal, and yeah, as you say, film it on a phone. I mean, why not? You can get you, you can don't get even need HDR a stabilized footage. gimbal because in the iPhone 14 and 15 you have a soft, stabilizer. Yeah. Yeah, with the action mode. That does not That does not I mean, I, they won't tell you this. That does impact footage quality. If you, if you can do it physically, you're better off doing it physically. But yeah, I mean, hell, um, the camera I'm using right now, I spent, I think, ninety. Uh, it's, it's a Sony. Um, I think I spent about ninety, maybe one hundred to one hundred and twenty pounds on it. Can't quite remember. It was a little while ago, and it's got a really decent four K sensor in it. Um, it's a little bit blurry when I move. It's got a bit of motion blur on it, but yeah, it's a really decent camera, and it was not expensive. Wait, you're not using a webcam, stellar. you're using an actual camera? Yes, a Sony, a Sony camera with a physical zoom, because I'm, I'm really far away from the camera, by the way. If I, don't, I had to get something with a physical zoom specifically, because otherwise I'm like this big in the picture. Seems and like actually, you're... another friend of mine, I don't know if you, if you might be watching, Captain Sidaris, um, who also knows Fechletarg and is also from Austria, um, recommended this camera for me, because uh, he and I, um, well, he, he kindly agreed to help me with a project that's releasing on my channel soon. Which is proper, the first time either of us have properly appeared, um, as opposed to just doing audio or, or you know gameplay or in my case remastering videos. And he recommended this camera, having done a bunch of research, and it's a really good one. And yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that expensive. You and you could film an FMV game on this, I reckon, or a few of these for different shots, and yeah, you'd get really decent quality image out of it. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so before we conclude this live stream, do you have anything to sure. plug? Well, only, only uh, again, the Wing Commander project is the only other big thing I've got going on at the moment. So uh, wcrespace.com, if anyone would like to have, have a look and check it out. As I say, we've got a demo running. And I suppose my channel, um, uh, which is on YouTube, at O Davis, where I just... Yeah, it's part uh, of the I, title. It's clickable. Oh, fantastic. Uh -huh. 
Excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, that one's, uh, I'm, I'm bound to get hit with a cease and desist at some point on that one because I'm just tinkering around with owned properties and seeing how much quality I can pump out of them. But yeah, I release content almost daily on there. Um, old, t old TV shows or 1080p footage that I've um, taken up to 4K just to try and tinker as much quality out as I can. And uh, I've got some really, I've been looking forward to this run up to Christmas for about six months because I produce my content long before it releases. And this is the like the, this next few months up to up to um, the end of the year is the, some of the best stuff I've got releasing. So people I'd like to check it out do. Again, this is pure hobby for me. I don't make any money out of it. I don't monetize it. I just you know I like to get the comments and hear what people think. I think we should already schedule the live stream for 2026 to to <laughs> see that that you'll actually complete the game by then and not make any oh, excuses. Sure Maybe the 50th anniversary or 60th anniversary <laughs> i'm pretty sure we're gonna make it that's that's a good uh, chunk of time to finish off what we're doing i'm sure you will well thank you owen for joining us and thank you for creating this amazing remaster i finally got to play the game i, I didn't <laughs> play it back then and then with modern machines i couldn't play it either so uh thank you for uh, making this happen well thank you for inviting me to talk about it and uh, being so kind about it i've really enjoyed it and thank you, everyone, for joining us, and thank you for donating. And I'll see you all on Friday when we play Phantasmagoria 1 with Paul, Tori, and our special guest. Bye!